It's like I don't know if you've seen that one before the press play. Um, I think so, yeah. <laughs> but play it anyway. <laughs> Is the kid who just like wanders in and he's wandered straight back out again? Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a lot of that. Oh my god! Fucking <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell! Oh. Okay, I think this is a good time as any to uh, <laughs> yeah, one last one. Hey, babe, you smell that? No, me neither. Stop cooking. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Hello, hello, hello. and welcome, welcome to Max Level, Level Games. games. How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's installment of the Max Level Games Podcast. I am your host, Mr. James Walters, alongside Mythman and the foot end, or the top end, Liam Malkin. Hello. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm great, You're actually. doing great. I'm doing great. You're doing great. It's absolutely amazing. So, oh, my Lord. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> those who don't know, this is a weekly. Semi-weekly. Yeah. Podcast, so we sit here for roughly an hour. Probably more than an hour. It's going to be long this weekend. It's definitely Week. going to be a long one this weekend. Yeah, this weekend, this this podcast. This Wednesday, this yeah, episode. This, this, this episode. It's going to be a long one. We talk about uh, fucking games, comics, films, TV shows. And absolute bollocks. All the bollocks. Anything and everything bollocks-wise. Yeah, I'm not cleaning the carriage and tickling the underside no. no more. The only funny thing is... This is this this is. I know it's obviously not in part of the intro right now, but I have to tell you it's right now because it's fucking funny. I got my mother to like check over the video file. No. Yeah, because I wasn't sure if the video file failed or not when I was away. So she watched. She, I admit, I was I was Facebook at uh, Facebook Messenger, you know, like video and stuff. So to watch the video working in real time. She gets to the end of the video no. without footage. Yet she's looking at it, going, "This seems very inappropriate, James." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." No. <laughs> Your mother has watched me wank off while covering a pair of imaginary bollocks. Yeah. Yeah. She did, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to face your mother. It's going to make it out of this house pretty awkward, isn't it? You climb out the window, it's fine. It's, it's... That is a viable option right now. <laughs> At this uh... point in time, that is a viable option. Yeah. In case you guys didn't realise already, uh, this is a very mature podcast. Yeah, it's very, very, very mature. Very mature podcast. Um... We don't like sugarcoat coat things here unless those things are donuts. So mm. you've been warned because we're gonna say we've got a lot to talk about, and some of these things are gonna get a bit, bit heated, a bit heated. Yeah. So <laughs> as always, first thing we talk about of the week, Liam. What have you been playing? Uh, well, I'm still grinding the shit out of Far Cry Five. For, yes, it is number five. Yes, it right. is number five. I almost said four, but you know we don't. We don't talk about number four. Number four didn't happen. I wish. Carry on. Yeah, so Far Cry 5. And I've also been, with the recent update, with the recent coming up. Upcoming. Upcoming, yeah, one or the other. Yeah. Of The Walking Dead, the fourth season. The final season. I've backtracked and played one and two. Okay. And I'm in the midst of downloading three. The New Frontier. The New Frontier, yeah. Just so I can catch up and... Yeah, just be ready for the new yeah. season when it comes out. Just so there's am not playing number f- season four and I... When did that happen? Oh, you know what Who I mean? the fuck is this guy? Oh, yeah. wait, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, that type of thing. Okay, that's fair. But looking at the trailer, at the new Walking Dead, the final season, it's like... Mm. I just loved... I personally just love, like, the promotional art where it's, like, Clementine's there all grown up with the axe and there's the kid and it's like, this is the exact same from season one. But it's not like, oh, they're just redoing it. It's like, oh, my God, the symbolism. Yeah. The symbolism. Just... Yeah, no, season one broke my heart. Don't. I was in tears that final episode. I was. I'm not even going to lie. I, I mean, te- we, we technically can go into spoilers because of our one year rule, but I don't think we should. I don't think we should. At the same time, if anyone's going to play it, they should have played it by now. But at the same time, again, let's just... Heads and tails for it? No. Just, I'd, I'd say no. Let's ah, leave just it. leave it. Then just we'll leave it. it. Because I- it's, the problem with these kind of games is they're very story-based. Yeah, so, so you can't ruin the end because then the story's ruined. And as well as that, a lot of time, choices, so... Yeah, but either way, that happens no matter what choice you make. No, I get that, but someone's journey to that ending might be different. Yeah. So, But either way, yeah. How do they hold up? Are you playing, like, the old ones on the PS3, or are you playing the remastered collection? The remastered collection. The remastered versions on current gen consoles. Okay. Yeah. I just played the remastered versions, and it's kind of a nostalgic journey. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. 
obviously you're watching little Clem all grown up go from being this little kid and she grows up and yeah. then she's this badass and it's like mm-hmm. I know the second season was pretty good yeah it was Still, that's there was that one scene though with the with the like the sewing equipment ah yeah yeah, yeah that, that was that was oof. pretty hard to do that was that was hardcore that was very graphic as well which is even more impressive now him or her that's all you've got to answer at the end of season 2 oh um who did you go with oh god Oh, it's been so long since I played it. I think I actually did like two run throughs as well. All right, the first choice then. The first choice was I went with him. Yeah, I went with him as well. Yeah. I think in the second choice, I went with her. See, I played and then the third it. choice, I fucking broke off. <laughs> I played the played it the first time and went with him. Mm-hmm. And then Google, like, YouTube, what happened if you went with her. Yeah. Just to see both endings, but yeah. I really couldn't be asked going through the whole system again. Wasn't there like five endings though? There was because like five different because endings. Because there's, there's, there was like go with him and then there was go well, with I, him and then there was it was go it, into that. It was like save him or save her and then that branched off to save him and then go with him or fuck off and yeah. leave him and then there was save her and then go with her or fuck off and leave her. Yeah. And then there was the the final one which just like fucked everyone off. Yeah, because you could you could let him uh, kill her yeah. and then kill him and then just fuck off on your own. So. I couldn't though. There's too much of a connection. No, I know. That's what I mean. It was um, there were some tough choices in that. I season. mean, don't get me wrong. I, I know I seem like a heartless bastard, but seem. Yes, seem because there is like my There's, heart is shrunk. It's like it's like a Grinch heart. Yeah, that's all it is. But yeah. it's still there. I still get the feels, man. You get them feels. I get the feels. Yeah. For all two seconds. For all two seconds, and just like kill. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, what else can we ask about? Well, I don't know, what do you want to talk about more of that? Anything else you want to talk oh, about wait, with us? Uh, only about the Far Cry 5, really, wasn't it? Is I've now kicked the shit out of Jacob. Okay. So, so now I've to, done You've only got one faith. more region. Yeah, I've done over. Faiths. Which, can we just say, we didn't get really talk about that much, but that was a mind fucking a half of a yeah, final. Yeah, I've already, I guess, I've already said, I've, I've finished the game, obviously, because I, yeah. it's, my, it's my game. Um, I'm not going too much into spoilers. I'm just saying that is a mindful. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like of all the three different islands, well, regions, I, regions, Faith was my favorite. Yeah, it was my favorite. It was just an absolute mindful, especially that last, that last. That, obviously, not going too much of a spoiler. That last battle. Yeah, I know. I mean, to be fair, there's there's mindful elements in Jacob's region. It's just like everything else outside yeah. of that is like samey. Everything sort of the, yeah. Everything's you could normal. play Jacob's and John's. Be like, apart from the you know. Yeah, that the, the acid sequences essentially. <laughs> then you know, it's, and that it, fucking the... box, Jacob. Oh the, yeah, that box, man. Yeah. <sighs> and breathe, and and breathe. Goose Frabba. See, I eliminated him with a sniper round to the fod. As you do. But if I had my choice, I would have happily got up close and personal and buried a Bowie knife so deep into his stomach. Yeah. And just like in twist, pull up out, and then like five times in each eye, just to make sure. Yeah, and then like tea bag them afterwards. Yeah, of course. But apart from that, yeah, of course. So, <laughs> oh. I didn't like Jacob if you haven't guessed. No, no. <laughs> I've still looked up if that's actually him or not. Satan who plays him from Supernatural. We'll have to have a little. Uh, you know what? I'll do it. Remind me as soon as we fucking finish this, and I'll. I'll do forget. It. Okay, yeah, you forget. I'll forget too. Oh well. Um. Uh, games I've played, um, I've sort of dabbled a bit this week in a lot of things. The only one I finished, as I said, I was going to finish was Horizon Zero Dawn, and um, I like it. Yeah, I do like it. But I will also say, um, I, I, I did remember how I mentioned there is a like a the easiest setting, a story setting. Yeah, you just you went, I went on easy I went on just to blitz through. I went, it, yeah. I went on easy first, just to I split through it. Then I was like, I'm going to try out this story setting, see what that's like. Where mm. everything's basically like minimalistic. I didn't die once, apart from the fact I fell off a cliff. <laughs> Um, the enemies just give them a quick slap and they're done. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, but there was like a couple of boss fights and they weren't so hard afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I feel like I feel like the story is actually really good. Yeah, the story is actually really good. There's there's some twists in there that like looking back on it, I should have seen coming, but at the same time, I didn't really think about it. Remind you know me to lend it off, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll lend you to it as well. Um, and there's also obviously because I got the complete edition, I got the. Frozen Wilds DLC as well, which yeah. is also pretty good. Nice. I don't like it as much as the original game. I like the new setting, where it's like like an Arctic area, yeah. and there's all new 
machines and stuff. But overall, it wasn't story wise. It wasn't as good as the first one. I don't yeah, think. as long as good as the main game, in my opinion. Um, now, open world wise, I, th- I think the open world is pretty good. It's just again, it's very big. It's it's. It's it's so big and not all the time there's stuff in there to do. It's not that I, I mean, I mean that might be that. Like, but I'm just saying, like when it comes to the open world games, it seems like everyone's trying to do bigger, better. But the problem with making it big is you've got to fill that space. Yeah, you've got to constantly put something in there. Yeah, which that's in my opinion is a waste because you could use whatever memory or whatever you're wasting on making these plants just to look aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm into more of the game play itself does that make sense yeah because like, we could have spent less time like i mean to be fair yeah the game does look really fucking good yeah i, can imagine. I was only playing on a standard ps4 and the the, the i'm pretty sure the tv i was using was a 1080p tv mm-hmm. but i imagine in 4k and on ps4 pro it does look like mm. in fact in fact, in fact no i think i've seen it on a ps4 pro in person once yeah uh there was there was a thing like last year year before it was the PlayStation VR event thing they were doing, like upcoming to the VR release. Sony were touring around like the UK and America and stuff. Yeah. With like events we could go and try out VR. Oh, fair enough. And in the waiting area there was a big fuck off huge four K TV and a PS4 plugged in and Horizons it was almost on the screen. Mm-hmm. They weren't playing mm-hmm. it, it was just kinda of, like looking at it. Yeah. It yeah. Really just good. to show you like the graphics and the Yeah, show you how good it can be. Um Wow, that was weird. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, Horizons are done, I can I can say it is a really good game. Fair Again, enough. Maybe playing it back when it came out, I'd have a higher opinion of it. But playing it now, like a year or so later, it's like it is a good game. It's worth a go at least, especially because you can get the complete edition. I think I got my copy for like twenty five quid. Oh, you can't go wrong. Exactly. You got the full game and all the DLC. No, that's what I mean. So I, think it, I don't know. With, a few money. Without sounding too mainstream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me, that game didn't get hyped up as much as it should have. You think? I think it got hyped up. Well, yeah, it definitely. Got, well, yeah, they, they did the standard routine with the marketing and stuff. The only reason like other things got hyped bit more, like i.e. God of War, mm-hmm. is because it was returning to an original, an old IP. It was a new take on an old IP. Mm-hmm. Whereas Horizon Zero Dawn is, it's from the same guys who made Killzone. Oh, that was a good game. Yeah, they were, I, well, not my cup of tea, but I've heard they're good games. So it's something very different for them. It's, yeah. a, it's a new IP from them, and it's a new game full full stock. You know, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. So. It's just that's what I mean. I felt like it sort of got not buried, but other I, things were more. They could probably probably could have spent more time marketing it when it came out. But when it did come out, when everyone was like, "This game is amazing," I feel like it did sort of get more recognition then. Yeah, but I think it's kind of like it's it's like. Do you know old movies that people like say for instance Shark Boy and Lava Girl? <laughs> let's just use that as an example. Okay, let's see where you're going with this. How good of a film is that? Let's it, be honest. Yeah, I mean I've not seen it in a very long time, but yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good when I remember. But when it came out it no one wants to know it. It's kinda of like one of them once someone was like Hey, go film this. Was it know? sort of in the same vein as like Spy Kids 3D? Yeah. It had that whole. It had a very similar look. Yeah. And it was. Had, I think it was the, the same thing like thing. directors and producers and stuff like that. I'm not too sure. Probably. But, but it had that big feel of like, you could tell how badly CGI it was. Yeah. If we look at it now, it's just be like, <sighs> you can almost see the green outlines around the actors. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's it's for me. It was kind of like one of them. Like, hey, someone had to tell you how good it was mm-hmm. before you realised how good it was. Makes sense. No, I get that. It's like someone had to take the plunge first. Yeah. But apart from that, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So that's sorry, you're doing. Um, I also played some VR stuff. Um, because as I said to you before, there is a game coming out in October called um, Astrobot Space Rescue for VR. It's like a 3D platformer again for VR. Mm-hmm. They that's. That's one out of a, a, a party room game for the VR called Playroom VR, which I played a bit of that. Yeah. Literally a bit, because there's, there's like seven or eight games, but only two of them are single player. <laughs> or can be played single player. <laughs> so, obviously, because I was on my own playing it, <laughs> I could only play these games. But you I were do kind of look with yourself. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> I was playing it with myself on my own in a dark room <laughs> with the lights off. With VR. With VR. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I had a good time. 
you know, I gave myself a cuddle afterwards. I looked, I, you know, I made myself a nice drink, nice meal. It I was paid for my own taxi home. Exactly. You know, there wasn't like a biscuit tin in the kitchen I had to go fish out of. <laughs> so, but I only played it. I mainly, I mainly played it to see what was sort of like upcoming with this new game. And looking at it, I can, I, I do like how it played this, this one fucking like platforming level in this game. Yeah. My only issue is a lot of the time the fucking it was a controller tracking game like a, a standard controller like tracking that movement and shit. Yeah. It would skew off all the time, which is annoying, especially when you gotta like aim it and like fling these ropes out with using the touchpad. Yeah. So I have to recalibrate all the fucking time. I hope to God they fix that in this new game because I do just want to play it. So other than that, I also played another VR game in the form of Skyrim. So, and I don't really know what... There's nothing much you can say about Skyrim apart from the fact that it's just Skyrim. If you've played Skyrim, then there's nothing new to it. Tell me I'm wrong. It's Bethesda. Bethesda it's, is God. I know Bethesda is God in your eyes, yeah? Not in anyone's eyes, Bethesda is God. Yeah, okay, mate. Um, I've play, You can actually play it two ways. You can play it with the controller, you can play it with motion controllers. I haven't played it with the controller yet. Slash, maybe not at all. I'll see. Yeah. Because... The control well, for one thing, the controls should feel a lot more nice. Yeah. The movement thing is weird. You can either walk normally or teleport. I always chose to walk. But the problem with playing it in motion is when you're trying to be all tactful, like, you know, shield up, then fucking swipe at him with a sword, it just devolves into fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Two swords. <laughs> <laughs> fucking swinging mildly at him. <laughs> That's all it evolved into. And the archery thing is even worse, because, like, every now and again, the tracking would, like, skew off. It'd, it'd think your arrow was all the way over the fucking, like, across the room. And then it sort of... The arrows sort of had, like, a bit of a guidance thing on them as well. So you could... If you shot it vaguely in the direction, yeah. it would sort of meander towards it in a way. Uh, Although it was pretty funny, I was hunting some goats at one point, like heading towards the throat of the world, and I killed this one goat. As soon as I got close to it, I realised the, the arrow went up its ass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You get that a lot, believe <laughs> yeah, it or not. It the enough. amount of kills you get, like, I remember one that I was playing as a wood elf because I loved the archery on it. Yeah. And um, I went full on sneak, so I had the th- the Thieves Guild's outfit, and mm-hmm. then there was a, the knight, the. What's going to me? I didn't know. Oh god! Cast your mind back a while, here, mate. It is, it is, because I haven't played Skyrim since like since it came out. No, I think I believe it. Or not, I think it was on the PS3 last time I played it. Oh yeah. I think I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah. It was a gulf while back. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, at the full like at the next level in the Thieves Guild, there's another like whole branch sort of thing that, and you get this other yeah the Knight Guild or something or. Like a better sneaky outfit, mm-hmm. and I had the best arrow and the best bow and arrow. And I remember like getting this proper full on sniper shot with an arrow, <laughs> and it went in slow motion. And, went, and he ended up killing the guy by getting him in the back of the leg. Oh, he died. Was it the knee though? I, I don't think it was the knee. I oh. think it was just above the knee. Oh god. Yeah, it was, his adventure days were over oh, completely. But it's, it's just like his life. Yeah. But I was just sitting there thinking, it's 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 in in it's in the <laughs> leg. How are you dying from that? <laughs> like, you're going to be in a lot of pain, screaming and shouting, but not death. I know, but that whole sneak uh, damage bonus thing is actually, like, a bit OP sometimes. No! A little, oh, I know, it's, I know it's madness to suggest that it's OP, <laughs> but it kind of is. Just, I've done the intro of that game of Skyrim in VR, like, seven times. <laughs> Only this time I've actually committed to carry on playing it a bit more. <laughs> This last time, I was when you get to the uh, underground section with the spiders and shit. Yeah. I got to that section and I, I crouched and tried to like snipe all the spiders <laughs> from the other room. I managed to get them all. No one saw me. I just kept going sneak bonus like times two damage, and they all just went. Eh. It's boss. Eh. It, is boss. it is boss. It is. Like I said, it's and you know the more you level, you sneak up as well. Yeah. You, you get to like a certain point where I think it's like if you get a sneak bonus and it's a range shot, it's like seven point five plus percent damage time wise <laughs> yeah fucking hell and but if it's an like if you sneak up behind someone oh it's like a 14 percent so if you've got like this big ass sledgehammer yeah that's got got an attack radius of like 200 mm-hmm. and then you sneak up behind someone and going you're getting 200 times 14 fucking hell you're not just killing them, you're wiping them from existence. Yeah. You're thanos them. <laughs> I like how we both just that as well. Same way, like, like... It's like you go to Wisdom and just go... <laughs> Dust. Um, 
but yeah, so um, I don't know. I think the controllers are odd because obviously it's the motion controllers. Yeah. So it's it's because obviously the way they're laid out, it's like the move button in the middle, and you have got the four mm. shape buttons and stuff. It's just kind of remembering where they are in when you got the headset on. Mm-hmm. It's like we have to try and remember off the top of my head. Bottom left is X, then circle, square, and triangle. I think. And the thing is, they obviously do different things depending on which hand you use. So mm-hmm. you to use the square button on the right hand, that's your shout. Which I was very disappointed I just couldn't actually shout in the microphone and shout. <sighs> I know that I thought that would have been brilliant. That was just just like run up. Yeah. <laughs> just like have have like well obviously because the, the the like compass bar is like the recharge thing yeah. for the shout, isn't it? Just have a little thing underneath when you equip the shout to say say these words and it will shout. I thought that, that would be fucking been, brilliant. That'd have been amazing. I would have happily stood there in the living room just going frustrata. Yeah, but what what they made it more awkward is as we said, you were alone in your room playing with yourself. And then shouting Fusro Dye, yeah? And then shouting... What, you saying you don't fu- shout Fusro Dye when you orgasm? I mean, usually I've got a belt around me next, so... Okay, yeah, fair enough. It kind of makes it hard to speak, then. It's kind of... <laughs> oh, I'm done. Do you want to give it a try sometime? Ah, I'm right, you know. <laughs> uh, but speaking of belts and whips and shit... Yeah. Um, the other BDSM, game I played... Yeah, I've got there for you, bro. 100%. The other game I played was that, that poll I did on, on the Facebook page. Um, I only got two votes. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it. <laughs> Thought I'd give it a try anyway. Wait, but to be fair, I got something. I actually got some kind of response. Which you was got nice. a response, so, yeah. you know. It was just a shame that it was literally like a 50-50 on two options. So it was between Dark Darksiders 2 and Neo Automata. And at the end of the day, I just went, flip a coin. Whatever this fucking lands on, I'll play that. Dark Darksiders 2, wasn't it? Nope. Wasn't it? Nope. No. Neo Automata. I thought you said it. I thought when I was reading, it was a uh, Dark Darksiders. No. Although I think I think what I might do actually is I might aim to play Dark Darksiders 2 sometime in November when before the third game comes out. Yeah, I would. I might try and play it then. <laughs> But, no, I played Neo Automata, finally. Finally started committing to that fucking game. That's a big-ass wasp. Yeah, it's fine. It'll be fine. Just, my um, my eyes are down here, Liam. Ignore the wasp, it's fine. Um, no, Neo Automata, I've mentioned this to you before, haven't I? Because um, one of the games I was, like, excited for from E3 was a new game from Platinum and Square yeah. Enix. This is another, this is a game from Pla- from Platinum and Square Enix. Oh, fair enough. So, it's like, how do I explain it? It's just a hack and slash. You ever play Bayonetta? Or you seen Bayonetta footage? I've seen Bayonetta, but I always felt like Bayonetta was just more of a female version of... DMC. DMC. No, I get that. It's both Capcom, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's that sort of style of gameplay, you know, you just fucking mash the shit out of the square button, the triangle button. Mm. It's But this one's very fast-paced. Like, in split seconds, you can dodge an enemy attack, and if you dodge it successfully, you can beat the shit out of them. So, um, it is... It's, it's really fun. Um... Plus, I like Nia as a series. Yeah. It's only ever had one game prior, and that was on the PS3. It was very underrated. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like your standard RPG, like turn-based, turn-based shit. It was the real-time combat, you know, smash the swear button and shit. <sighs> and it was really good, I thought. Um, there's like bullet hell elements as well. You know, like bullet hell shooters where you have like twin stick controllers, yeah. one's putting one way, there's full fucking bullets fly everywhere. You try to dodge bullets while firing bullets. Yeah. That's called a bullet hell shooter. Oh, and there's elements of that in this game as well because you have like a pod robot thing that shoots bullets. You have different settings for it, but I just leave it on the Gatling setting. It just no. fires bullets endlessly as long as you hold the R1 button. Can't go wrong then. Exactly. So, um, and obviously the, the enemies fire bullets as well, which you can destroy or dodge out the way of, all this kind of shit. Um, but it's very different from the first game in the way that the only thing that made it over is the robots. And now the robots have an origin as well. Because oh, okay. they, they were just kind of in a factory in the first game as far as I can remember. I thought that was kind of every robot's origin. No. Well, it, it is. Made. I'm just getting myself comfy right now. No, that's fine. Um, that's the, no, they, like I said, they were just like in a factory in the first game. They just, you just thought they would have been made there. Uh, but then the second game, in this game, you find out they're actually put there by aliens. Oh, who aliens. took over the world long, long, long ago. Aliens. The game actually came out over a year ago, so I can, we can mention spoilers. I'm not even that far into the game, to be honest, I don't think. But the I thing, mean, if you want to mention spoilers, I've, I haven't played this game, so this literally is just yeah. all you want. This bro. the thing is though, with this game, one playthrough isn't actually enough. Because is it one of them? You've got to keep playing. You've got to go back, play it again, sort of thing, change your elements up and that. It is and it isn't. I'll explain why. It was like in the first game as well. As soon as you finish the game, sometimes you had choices and stuff. You were the choice you made. You can go back and play the game. Mm-hmm. But when you go back and play the game, it's different. So in the first game, um, there was this. I can't remember. There was this female companion character you had. She was a bit of a bitch, but at the same time, she was still like she turned out to be like a friend of yours. She has like some kind of demon thing in her head. Um, and in the second, when you called schizophrenia, a little bit, yeah. When you play the game through a second time, you can hear the voice in her head. Whereas, whereas beforehand, you can just talk to her normally. You can hear the voice in her head like throughout the game. 
this time I've not got to this part obviously yet because I've not finished the game mm -hmm. finished the game through normally um, you play now as an android called 2B you I believe when you start this game a second time you play as an android called 9S who is your sort of companion throughout the game so far mm -hmm. and then on the third time through you play as another one called like I think it's like A2 or something like that um, and it just I think it just changes like that for like three or four playthroughs um, and what's even more weird depending on if, if you can if you can get behind this idea or not trophies and stuff I don't know how big you are into getting earning trophies in games but if you complete this game like six or seven times through yeah after that sixth or seventh completion when you go into the game you can spend in-game money to unlock to buy trophies <laughs> we'd know how I feel about in-game buying oh well, yeah but it's not like it's not it's not microtransactions it's not real real world money it's money you earn in game I know so it's 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 the opposite. It's like reverse microtransactions. You're 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 paying in-game money to earn, well, not real world, like trophies I, and stuff. But you no, know what I mean? We just, mm, I don't know. Call me old-fashioned, but I think you you should earn. Mm. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think you should earn trophies. But if you're getting seven times through a game, you still not got this fucking trophy you need. You know. You shit. <laughs> that and you know I can I can justify the the option to put it in there. Besides, like I said, it's just an option. You don't have to buy the trophies. You can buy the trophies, which I think is a nice touch. Yeah, but that's but... the thing. If you're giving someone, okay, I'm giving you the option to run this 26 mile marathon, <laughs> no. or get a taxi to the end. Yeah, I'll take a taxi because I'm a lazy cunt. Yeah, you see, I'm going with this now. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's what I mean. It's entirely down to choice, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's down to choice, but if you've got the choice, obviously people are going to take it. For me, it's like, no, those trophies are there to be earned. Exactly. In the fucking so things. you earn the trophies? What, by paying for them? No, I mean actually doing the things to <laughs> yeah, earn the trophies. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So do you? Can, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that... Again, I've not got this far in the game, so I can't clarify this. This is just what I've heard. You don't have to buy the trophies. You can oh, no, earn them naturally. It's just saying that if, you know, if there's one trophy you're particularly struggling with... And for some reason, you can't get it no matter what else happens. And you, you decide, you know what, fuck it. This trophy's not worth it. But it's the one trophy you need to get a platinum. Just throw them some fucking in-game currency. Go grind some gold for like half an hour and buy the trophy. Fair enough. So, but anyway, yeah, that's as, that's as much as I know about the game so far. Fair enough. I'm enjoying it so far. It's just, I've got it on standard <laughs> setting because playing it on easy is too easy. You can playing it on easy is easy. Because you can, you can, you can, you can, you can like, um... Chips, and, oh, like them fucking ch things. Chips and stuff to increase your attack prowess and that. And we're getting distracted by this fucking wasp now. Um, I am listening. <laughs> you, you you can you equip chips to make yourself stronger, but if you play in easy mode, you can equip chips that do things automatically, like automatically attack and heal and stuff. Where's the gun? He's underneath the chair. But yeah, so I, I think it's a good game so far. Um, I do. I I think I've invested about eight hours into so far, Ooh. which is not very much at all. I think. I think a single campaign's like 30 to 40 hours, so. And I think, for argument's sake, I'll play it through once as an initial, like, saying I've finished the game. Yeah, yeah. I'll revisit it at some point, but for now, I'll play it once and then move on to something else because I yeah. do have other things to play. We have, we have a lot of other things to play. And obviously, there's stuff coming out soon that I want to play. In fact, the Mega Man X Legacy comes out this week. Yeah. In fact, I think it's out today. So I might pick up the second one of them because. I'm not really much interested in the first collection, but still. Uh, but, right, so, what we didn't realise last weekend was we knew Comic-Con was coming up, but what we didn't know was it's just happened. It was literally the weekend of that podcast. Oh. So, so much fucking shit's come out. Trailers, so much. We've got so much news this week. It's unreal. There's a lot more. This is, is, is going to be the long episode. This is going to be the long one. In fact, we'll title this episode, no, wait, this is the long one. <laughs> We fucked up. <laughs> this is the long one. <laughs> but so we'll go into watch that quick. Um, trailer wise. So, okay, which of these ones do you want to talk about first, or is there anything you want to bring you throw up as well? Actually, these are just ones I've I wanted to talk about. I mean, if you want to talk about them, I'm fine by talking about them, and then I'll just throw my little. Okay, sure. We'll start at the, top at the then. end. The Aquaman trailer. Now you don't like Jason Momoa. We we know this. <laughs> But I would fuck that bitch up. You would try. I would. Okay. <laughs> but besides that, how, how do you think the film looks? Fine. The film looks good. It does look pretty good. It's a it DC. looks better than Justice League. 
let's be honest. It's a DC. And you know what? It's Jason I might even... Momoa, but it looks I... good, and you, I'm you... gonna go watch it. And I'm, I'm, I'm hate genuinely for it. I'm genuinely debating this now, but I might after we finish this and I go shopping like that, I might just buy the fucking Justice League, see how cheap it is, and I'll just buy it just for just so I can say I fucking watched it at this point because at this point it's getting ridiculous. We not watch Justice League. We're not DC fans. Well, no, it's not that we're. I... It's not that I'm not a DC fan. It's just so far the films aren't great. No, okay, I'm not. It's not that I'm not a DC fan. I'm not a DC movie fan. That's what I mean. The films, the aren't... comics, I think I like, and the certain adaptations to t- TV, I like. Yeah. But the movies for me, the films, the films have been falling flat. Like Batman vs Superman was a bit of a joke. Save Martha. <laughs> Fucking Martha. We've been Wonder fighting Woman. all this time. Wait, your mum's the na- it's got the same name as me. We're friends. It's, and now it's, suddenly best friends. That's it, dude. We're, We're friends. Suddenly best friends. Um, Wonder Woman was, was pretty good, I thought. Wonder Woman was good. Yeah, and... Just don't let a yank fly a plane. Never. No, never let anyone call Chris fly a plane. Yes. Never. Um, And then, we've obviously not seen Justice League, so I can't really weigh in on that, but... I haven't heard great things about it, though. No, it's... I've heard all... Ant- Ant-Man and the Wasp... Has made what just as, in one weekend what Justice League made its entire life. Exactly. So it's like that's not good. People didn't want to see Justice League, but I don't think that people don't want to see Justice League. I think it's just as we've just described. Then DC don't have the best track record no, when it comes don't. to movies. But now they're changing things up because Aquaman does look good, and the other DC trailer they showed off Shazam. Yeah. Now I only saw the fucking picture of him like a few months ago. Of him in costume, I was like, "Huh, oh, that's a odd choice." And then we watched the trailer. And it's like, "No, that's a cool that ass looks, choice." It, there was a meme recently I saw. You remember in um, in the first Ant Man movie when he gives when he gives his daughter like that really just like horrible looking fucking rabbit thing. Yeah, she's like, "It's so ugly. I love it." <laughs> There's a meme. It's like of Shazam. It's like it looks so stupid. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? Let's be honest. Did DC take themselves serious? They have, yeah. And I think that's where they've been falling flat. You've got to sort of get on Marvel's wavelength of like, we're heroes. This is stupid. Yeah, this entire world is just ridiculous. But we're gonna love this so much. Yeah, because the the thing with like superheroes and comics in general is, yeah, sometimes they do have very dark storylines. But at the end of the day, it's still a world full of fucking people in tights beating other beating each other up. It's not even that for me. It was kind of like if we're really gonna. Really, really gonna break this down, yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, it was kind of like between Marvel and DC. DC was the hardcore goth that used to stand in a corner with all his mates and moan about everything. Yeah. Marvel was the scene kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> They're both still in some sort of way the same thing, but they just they just sort of shuns it. Yeah, they just sort of like shoves genres of each other does that make sense yeah yeah I get that it's like you've got the whole like comic book superhero genre up here and then it's broke off into like the emos which is DC and scene which is Marvel yeah I get I can I can see that analogy in person yeah <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of why I embody both companies do you know what I mean no I get that yeah but I feel but, like if you talk to DC it's just gonna be like my life is worthless <laughs> I'm going to go home and hurt myself now. I hate everybody. Whereas Ma was like... Oh, I mean? Just we like, are Groot. We're going to dye your hair. It's like, I don't want it, but we're going to do it anyway. It'll be funny. <laughs> do it, I dare you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, but moving on from superheroes. Uh, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Now that's supposed to be its own... Cinematic universe, isn't it? Godzilla and King Kong, because that's it's, part of that world, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, no. It, I, no, I think I it, think, I think it is. Modern... It's just obviously King Kong was set like in what the seventies, sixties. King Kong was set way back in like the forties. No, like, I mean the recent, the, the latest one, Kong Skull Island with Tommy Hudson. Oh uh, yeah, I think that is more seventies. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, like that, that was set in the past, whereas Godzilla was set like. Just the year it came out around. Yeah, I think that came out present day, sort of thing. Now, I haven't watched that that first Godzilla film in a while. With Brian Cranston in quotation marks, he's in, he's in the film. <laughs> in um, in for a whole three minutes. Exactly. <laughs> but it didn't end with the world like post-apocalyptic style, did it? No. So that's why this trailer confuses me because it it seems very. I I think they're calling it Godzilla Two, but it's not gonna be. 
a sequel. Uh, does that make sense? I know it's well. They're interested in like all the other kaiju's and stuff, aren't they? Like, yeah, they're bringing I all think the other titans in there. Yeah. Uh, I, there was that. Is it what's the one with like the three heads? What's that the called? The side. Uh, no. Is it the Hydra? The Hydra. I thought that was a Greek thing. It is. Oh, fair enough. It's the Hydra was one of the twelve tasks that Hercules has to defeat. Yes. To become right. a god. Yeah, you're right. It was. Yeah. That's in the Disney film, but probably in actual mythology as well. It is actually in mythology. It's just Disney yeah. made it, you know. Funny. From Get from. up on the Hydra's back. <laughs> Will you stop it with the head slicing thing? <laughs> <laughs> but I think it looks decent. Oh. Millie, Bobby, Millie, Millie Bobby Brown's in it as well from Stranger Things. <sighs> You're 11. Oh, yeah, you I, know, I, know, I know of it, but I don't watch Stranger Things. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to get so much hate for that. Yeah. To each their own, mate. It's it's not that I can, I don't like it. I've tried getting into it and yeah. Well, like I've mentioned this many times before, my my own stance on this is if you have given something a try, then and you don't like it, that's entirely fine. I mean, it's not even like oh, one episode I'm done. I've watched a good four or five episodes and just can't get into it. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I've tried I've tried convincing you many times to watch Sons of Anarchy. I am actually gonna watch that soon because. The other half wants to watch it as well. Yeah. So we're going to watch that soon. Oh, not um, just that as well. We're talk, dead quick, we're talking about Sons of Anarchy. Uh, there's a spin-off coming off called The Mayans MC. Okay. Same universe. It's ba- it's set straight after. Just in case anyone wa- has watched it, it's set straight after the very last episode of Sons of Anarchy, where unfortunately what happens, happens. It's <laughs> it's It's been out for more than it should be, but obviously what you want to watch, I'm not going to spoil it too much. Okay. Uh, but... It's set straight after the last episode where unfortunately something happens and yeah. stuff like that. And it's going to be based on a prospect of the rivals of the Suns, which is the Mayans. Now, they share the same areas. They share the same... They, they have the same lower back patch, okay. which is where they're from, which is Suns have got California. Mm-hmm. The Mayans have got California, which is... Like, which is reminiscent of actual bike, biker warfare between the Hell's Angels and Outlaw. Okay. But we won't get... No, not Outlaw. Uh, the Mongols, but we won't get into that. Okay. But that's what the story's going to be based on. It's going to be based on a uh, prospect trying to make his way through the ranks in the Mayans, basically. Mm-hmm. But it's meant to be really, really good. Okay. But I'll have to show you the trailer afterwards. Fair enough. Um, but the other trailer we, we, we wanted to sort of discuss-ish was Fantastic Beasts 2. Um... Crime, crimes of Grindelwald. You know I think called? it's called Grindel, Grindelwald. Yeah, Johnny Depp's character. Um, yeah, I think it is Grindelwald. I see. I said this when Fantastic Beasts first came out. I used to love Harry Potter, but then I just kind of fell out of love with it. Um, I think it just got dragged out too much for too long. It it was a big series, and like of all the fan bases out there, sometimes I find the Harry Potter fan base to be most irritating <sighs> because the proper. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'll defend certain certain aspects of things I'm a fan of but when there's flaws I'll accept the flaws but these that's don't. that's besides the point I think it looks good to be honest I'm I, I like the first Fantastic Beasts that's why I like I'm looking forward to this new one no uh, so but there's not much to say about it other than the fact that it looks good and there's more beasts in it which is interesting um, I think Eddie Redmayne as well I like Eddie, Red, Eddie Redmayne as an actor character I'm trying to remember his face oh yeah that's where you've seen another one of The Walking Dead He's in Fantastical Beasts and we're to find him. Which one of the four? the music teacher. When we were watching the trailer and you went, we've never seen his face before. Oh, is He's it in, him? It's in Fantastical Beasts. You know, the Yank in the first one. Oh, yeah, the one who loses his memory? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, it's him. Yeah, he's in the sequel as well, I mean, actually. I've just only clicked onto that myself, so... Yeah, I was going to say, like, where have I seen his face? Yeah, it's him. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, he's in it's the sequel. It's literally just only when... Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I really liked him in, in the first film. Yeah, he was so. can't, he, he, he can't mean. He was the author surrogate character. He's the yeah. one that we're all just like. He, he's the character that if we were in that situation, we'd be like, that's what we'd be. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, awesome. Help me. I don't know what's going this on. This giant rhino with a bone or a fucking testicle on its face wants to hunt me. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so what other trailers have you seen that you want to talk about? Vikings. Okay. Now, if you don't know by now, we all know I'm a massive Viking fan. It's unfinished, but. Yeah, you've got the giant tattoo on your arm. It's it's, it's in the working process of a Viking in battle with blood all over his face mm-hmm. on my arm tattooed. Yeah. And 
I'm a big fan of Nordic, Nordic mythology mm-hmm. and the way Vikings lived and stuff like that and yada, yada, yada. Mm. So the fact that when I first discovered this program called Vikings, which was out on History Channel, I creamed. <laughs> Look, oh, I'm done. <laughs> the fucking <laughs> title sequence comes on. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Thank God, Odin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just unreal, right? The story's been... It's been out for years, so... The story... For, ah, I keep hitting that. I, I talk with my hands. Oh, that's my the God. problem. Uh, the story follows this one Viking called Ragnar Luthbrook. Say it again. Ragnar Luthbrook. Okay. That two words. Yeah, it's... it's Ragnar... Ragnar's his first name. Luthbrook. Luthbrook. Okay. Is his last name. Ragnar Luthbrook. Okay, fair enough. And he's just a farmer. He's just a... That's all he is. And he's, people think anime protagonist names are hard to remember. I know, right? <laughs> Carry on. He's a farmer. But he's just a normal farmer and he... He gets to this point where it's the very beginning of Viking pillage in England. But okay. it shows you it from the Vikings' point of view. Mm-hmm. The Vikings are starving. They've got nothing. It's hard to farm in Norway and Sweden and Iceland because it's fucking cold. Mm-hmm. So they're trying the best to farm. He's just a normal family fella and he finds this thing, this like map of, of, of a traveller who says there's more to the West. Because these keep invading like the neighbouring countries. Yeah, but they're all From the well. East and they're all on board as well. So it's like, what do we fight? So he goes, all right, so we go West. Mm-hmm. And everyone thinks he's nuts. Everyone's like, not into the West. There's not into the West. What are you playing at? There's not into the West. Eventually, he gets like these brave souls. They're like, fuck it, we'll come. Yeah, why not? We'll try it. And they end up discovering England. So and then that's like the birth of the Viking pillagers in England. Yeah. And he sails back and he's got all this gold because England's got that loads of gold and the raiding churches and taking these gold crosses and all that. And he's like coming back like Conor McGregor walking into the octagon. He's like, yeah. I knew there was more to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's basically the first season. Then the second season, like, he stops being a farmer and he challenges the king. He's like, I was right. I should be king. I should be. And the king's like, no, you so you were right on what? Mm. And so then they end up having it. And then he becomes Jarl, which is like king of that region. Yeah. Does that make like sense? Like Skyrim. Yeah. So you get like a Jarl and then you become king. Uh, and then it's just that it escalates from there. But then... The latest se- series is based on his sons. Now, I can't remember all of them, but he's got four sons. The main two are either the Boneless, and you'll understand why he's called the Boneless if you watch it. Has he got no dick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he can't. Okay, yeah. He, he's sort of dead from the waist down. Ah, you know what I mean? It's uh, so either the Boneless and his other son, which is his basically his first son, it's called Bjorn Ironside. <laughs> That's a good name, actually. Yeah. And there's two other sons. There's five sons, actually, but the other three just sort yeah. of are there. Does that make sense? Okay. And it basically, the last like two seasons have been based on this rivalry of, well, I, I'm the oldest, so I should be the king. And I was like, yeah, but I'm the more tactitional. I'm the one who's got these people rallied. I'm the one that's got these people built up into an army. Yeah. They're not just ragtags no more. They're just an army based and there's like, but I'm the oldest and I just... <laughs> but watch it. It's got so much accuracy Okay. when it comes to Vikings in general. Yeah. Because fucking Vikings didn't wear horns on the helmet. <sighs> Breathe. Do you know how much that pisses me off? I know, you mentioned prior. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's it's very accurate to the sources and it's sort of, it's a good little drama as well to watch. Okay. There's kind of like them little moments here, like, ooh, oh, shit. <laughs> ooh, that nigga fucked up. You see, I know my dad loves the show. I just never really give it much time, so. I'd give it a watch. I'd, I'll, yeah. I mean, I w- again, I wouldn't force it on someone if you're into that style, you're into that style. Yeah. If you're not, you're not. But I would suggest giving it a couple of watches. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it a look. All right. So that dragged my mother was opposed to. I apologize. No, mate. It's absolutely fine. It's it's good to talk about things you love, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, but we must get into the news because we have a lot to 
discuss this week. A lot's gone on. Not just with Comic Con, but outside of Comic Con. A lot's well. gone on. So, starting off, as you guys probably know, we talk about like film and television news. <laughs> and the first bit, this is a big story at the minute. It's one of the biggest stories of the weekend. James Gunn, who is the writer and director of The Guardians of the Galaxy, he, well, both one and two yeah. he was brought on to help with the script for the Infinity War to help like write those characters into the, into the, into the script Damn, uh, he got fired yeah. he got sacked from Marvel and Disney um, because he, he said some very naughty things ten, ten years, years ago, ago. Well, around about ten years ago I think the tweets were from 2008 and 2012 between that time, time mm. frame Yeah. but Disney have, it's been brought to light again and Disney have just decided to cut all ties with him uh, they said in an official statement um, offensive attitudes and statements to discover on James's Twitter feed. So, basically, he's not doing Guardians 3, which was set to start filming next year. Um, I wonder who's going to take over, though, and that's some big boots to fill. Not only that, though, as well, after Infinity War, he was, like, going to be the next sort of, like, spearhead for the MCU because mm-hmm. they, were so- they wanted to go more cosmic with the characters they were going to introduce. Yeah. And since he's basically the one who introduced the cosmic, like, well, the cosmic MCU into the, into the, into yeah, the film yeah. with the Guardians... He, he's, How are they gonna go who's going to take over? This is the world that he created, essentially. So, here's the thing that I want to know as well. Now, you know as well as I do when it comes to the comic books. Sorry. Okay. The team up with a certain anti villain. A Venom? Yeah. Yeah. How's that going to work? Oh, that's that. Mate, they're, they're, they're only just talk, sort of talking about Spidey and Venom at this point. But that, not even that's a model of a fucking mess, so we'll not even get into that. But <laughs> if it does, then they've got to introduce... Well, that's that's Flash Thompson Venom as well. That's not Eddie Brock Venom. I know. So, and they have a Flash Thompson in the MCU now. Is that that dickhead kid, kid from Homecoming? Yeah. What, are they going to wait till he grows up and then they're going to stick him in that? I don't know. I really don't know, but that's not... But anyway, yeah, so... Moving on. Yeah, he's been fired. Um... <sighs> Well, I say it's really hard to talk. I've been watch. I've been trying to keep up the story as best I can. I've heard so many different things. Basically, these aren't these tweets aren't news. Well, they are and they aren't. They're he, not. That he's old. brought them up beforehand. Like when he was signed on to Disney to start doing Guardians, he mentioned you know he said he's done these. He yeah. Mentioned these things in the past because we used to he used to think of himself as a provocateur. A provocateur. Yeah, you know, trying to trying to push the envelope, trying to be edgy as fuck. So he's an emo. No, not so much an emo, but he's trying to he's trying to increase he's trying to do like edgy black comedy that just really fell <laughs> off the edge. It wasn't. I've looked at some of the I've looked at a few of the thing the tweets and to be honest, some that find those tweets is actually quite hard. I don't know. I can't I can't find these these offensive tweets. At least no one's showing them. Everyone's all like, he said these offensive things. Okay, well, what's he said? We're not going to mention them here. They're too offensive. <laughs> okay, so how am I supposed to find these? Go look for them. Okay, I'll go look for them. Every news article he said some offensive things. What's he said? It's not going to show him on this news article. It's too offensive. <laughs> but, uh, by the way, yeah, he mentioned it before when he first signed on to Disney. He said, you know, I've said all these stupid things in the past. I acknowledge them. It's not who I am anymore. You know, it's kind of bollocks. He even did it again, like, later on. But the problem now is, as far as what I've been reading into it has discovered, it's because he's, you know, because he's so anti-Trump. Yeah. It's, it's all a very big political thing. That's what's gone on. And one of Trump's biggest followers, I think it's like Mike Cernovich or some guy like that. I don't know who he is, but he's apparently he's a bit of a dick. And he's got nothing better to do his time than... Wait, wait. Trump fans aren't dicks? You only realising this? Dude, I thought they were like the most nicest people in the world. Nah, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but he's basically had nothing better to do his time than to scour through James Gunn's Twitter feed. Who has to say? He's a very he's a very vocal and ad- adamant opposer of Trump and all those kind of box. But politics, we don't do politics here, so let's not get into that side We don't things. do politics, James. And he's gone through and found these tweets and brought them to light now. And essentially in the climate we're in now where someone can lose their job over something stupid on the internet. I think it's very stupid how sensitive for people are nowadays. Yeah, of course they are. Like, they I've read through them. need to backbone. I've read through them and maybe maybe I'm just fucking desensitised to all hell. But I can I can see why people would get offended by them but at the same time, like, there's a lot worse shit out there than this. I mean, it, it, it does. It winds me up how sensitive people are when it comes to certain criteria. Just, yeah. It's... Mm, I mean, I've not seen them again, but of what I've heard, they're, they're like paedophile rape and age jokes. That's it. Which are like, oh come on, I'm not being funny. I, I don't give a shit. I'm, who watches this and who does, who hears it or what? Everyone makes them dark jokes when they feel comfortable around people. Yeah. 
We all make them jokes. I don't give a fuck what race, creed, or religion you are. You all make jokes about the others. It's kind of... It's, it's, and anyone to sit there and go, I don't. You are chatting so much bullshit, it hurts. And if you've not made them, you've at least heard them once or twice and maybe giggled a little you've bit. Giggled, you've definitely giggled. You've de- you might not make them, but you definitely have heard them and go, <laughs> You yeah, might have hated yourself be- afterwards, but you've giggled. It's because of that reaction. It's like, you laugh, it's like, oh my God, that's so dark. Why that's what I mean. It's like, it's starting, it's like triggering that nervous sensitivity laugh, but you still laughed. Yeah, you acknowledge that it's a bad thing to laugh at, but at yeah. the same time, you're like, it's still funny. It's but- like, you know, I'm not going to make a joke about it. I went to, but I thought, no, I won't. It's, people make them jokes and people instantly go, oh, yeah. it's so bad. We've done it million. We've done it fucking millions of oh, times. Oh come on, our friendship's based on half them. our conversations are like we shouldn't be laughing at this. This is this is terrible. Why are we laughing? Yeah, but to be fair, you and I aren't the only ones who who think this is all a load of bullshit. Dave Batista, who plays Drax, he's he's so far the most adamant defender of of James going on to on Twitter and stuff. I'd back down straight away. Have you seen us as a Dave Batista? Yeah, I know you get destroyed. <laughs> Literally, like as it happened, this was I've got the tweet here. This is the first thing he said, like as it was being reported. He says. Excuse me, quote. I will have more to say, but for right now, all I will say is this. James Gunn is one of the most loving, caring, good-natured people I have ever met. He's gentle and kind and cares deeply for people and animals. He's made mistakes. We all have. I'm not okay with what's happening to him. And then if you go onto his actual Twitter feed, there's like post after post even more of just constant defense of the guy. He's he's calling it a cyber Nazi attack, which, let's be honest... It is. It is, because, to be fair, a lot of the people looking at these tweets... Uh, again, we don't do politics, but they lean more towards the right, which is like conservatives. The Trump people are right wing yeah, most say. for the most part, as far as I'm aware. But I'm not being funny. Trump fans can't say not about rape jokes. Their president just grabs it by the pussy. <laughs> if you're gonna be offended by anything, be offended by the fella that's actually coming out with this shit. If she wasn't my daughter, I would date her. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, but I got City and go on, but no, I know. we don't do politics. I know, but... And then, he, like I said, J- Dave Petista was the first one to come on to his defence, and then there's the other Card- Guardians cast have also come out with different statements now as well. Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel aren't on Twitter, so they haven't really said anything as far as I'm aware. Bradley Cooper's a legend. He's brilliant, yeah. But he's, he's actually working on a film this year. It's pretty good. Uh, but Chris Pratt, he's come out with something. He's come out with a Bible verse. He's very religious nowadays, Chris Pratt. He's very Bible heavy, which you know, tweets their own. It's their own. Yeah, he he's, he's tweeted this this verse from James one nineteen that says, "Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger." Yeah. Which I imagine, if you understand religion, Bible verses, that makes a lot more sense. But it just no, no, you've got to break it down realistically. It means allow everyone to say what they want to say. Yeah. Be quick to listen to what everyone wants to say, but then sit down, take your time, think about what they're saying. Think about how you'd react in that situation, and think about how you would feel if you said if someone turned around and said you were wrong for saying what you wanted to say. Yeah. So be quick to listen. Listen to what they've got to say. Mm-hmm. But, but don't just fire off because you. That 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 that's triggered me. That yeah. offends me. Yeah. No. Sit yeah. down. Be slow to speak. Because mm-hmm. think about it. Yeah. And you know what I mean. And then be slow, even slower to hate because the world's too quick to hate each other now. Yeah, I know. I mean, without going again, without going too deep into politics, and we're meant to be going about this and that. The world's too quick to hate each other. People hate each other for race, creed, religion, yeah, beliefs. Feminists hate males. Certain groups hate feminists. Muslims hate certain people. So it, it, it's yeah. There's we need to just honestly, the world just needs to chill the fuck out. Well, I know, and it's also it's also like a fact that news stories about bad things spread more spread better than good things. So we like gossip. We like yeah. Whether people sit there and go, I don't gossip. No, we like gossip. Yeah, we do. It's a human. It's human nature, unfortunately. Uh, but as I say, Chris Pratt, he's done that. Uh, Zoe Saldana, who plays Gamora, mm-hmm. and Karen Gillan, who plays Nebula. Yeah. They've both tweeted similar things, just basically expressing that they love all of their Guardians, the gas me- Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy cast members and mates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Zoe Saldana went into a bit more detail. She said, quote, It's been a challenging weekend, I'm not going to lie. I'm pausing myself to take everything in before I speak out a term. I just want everyone to know I love all, in capitals, all members of my Guardians of the Galaxy family. Always will. Mm. So, And then the the last two reactions, which I think are like the, the most extreme reactions. Michael Rooker, who played uh, Yondu, he just left Twitter altogether. He's just like, fuck this noise, I'm out. He said, literally, quote, Twitter sucks, I want nothing to do with it. Twitter does suck. That's yeah. why I don't have an account. I had an account. 
I don't think I've deactivated it. I just deleted the app and yeah, you don't bother. I with got it. out of there because yeah. for me, Twitter just seems like Twitter now. It's in today's in today's like society and stuff. Twitter is the cause of most unemployment. I wouldn't be surprised if someone made, made a fucking poll of how people lost their jobs and Twitter was like right up there. No, it would be. It's or just social that. media in general. Twitter for me just seems to be the biggest place for people to have arguments. Yeah, of course it is. It's like, it's the biggest place to have arguments, trolls, cause murder and drop memes. That's it. Yeah. And get people fired as well. That's what I mean. There's no point in it. I mean, to be honest, the worst part is this isn't even the first. This isn't the only story on, on today's podcast about Twitter stuff that could get someone fired. See what I mean? But we'll talk about that later on. The last thing is, um, I'm probably going to butcher this, but Pom Clef Mentief. Mentief? She played Mantis in the second film. I was going to say, there's definitely no, no chance I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be able to say that. I can't that. even say that at all. Pom Clef. Clement, Clementief? Clementif? 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 I don't know. The one who Mantis. 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 Yeah. Fucking she, Mantis. She posted like a video of her writing on a piece of paper. Um, for, for, as like her response. It's, uh, she wrote down, uh, we are Groot, we are a family, we stand together. Which I think is quite nice, really. No. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's all that noise. That's that story. James Gunn. A lot of people want to be rehired. In fact, there's a petition going at the minute. It's It's got a goal of 200,000 signatures, I think. Last I heard, which is only like yesterday, it's it's already at like 1,800. <laughs> H- uh, 180,000, sorry. So it's basically... We shouldn't be, we should not penalise someone for past integrities. No, it's 10 years ago. And again, it's stuff that's been acknowledged before, so... I know the sad thing about this sort of thing as well. What? Unfortunately, we, we always judge someone on the past integrities. Yeah, of course. It's like, again, without going into too much politi- politics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. In England, we've got, obviously, Theresa May and Jamie... And... Ah, uh, Corbyn. Oh, yeah, James Cole. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's the actor. Um, I was going to say, that's why I said Jamie. I forgot you mean. I know you mean, though. But him. Yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn. But yeah, and people are dragging up things to try and slate him. Because he wants to obviously be Prime Minister. Yeah. But then you've got Theresa May fans absolutely going off the fucking bollocks trying to find all kinds out. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing they've got on him is he's very open to... Everyone's got their own right to do what they want. They've got their own sim. He's, he's he was sympathetic back in the nineties and eighties. Yeah. Towards the IRA. Okay. Which is a big massive thing to English and nah, not between that. Yeah. But coming from someone who's got who who travels to Ireland a lot, mm-hmm. the Irish have got nothing but pure welcoming feelings and love and stuff like that. Towards me, I'm an Englishman mm-hmm. in the Republic of Ireland, and people don't give a fuck. People are just like, mm, you're not right, how are you? Yeah. So why the fuck are people dragging it up now? It's it's one of them. It just does my head in that we judge people on the past integrity. No, I know. I've got a dark past. Yeah. But that doesn't define who I am now. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? My past doesn't define me. <laughs> you know my name, not my story. Your story. <laughs> oh. <Whore. laughs> okay. Go well, on. Okay, we'll move on now. It's a bit more, a bit more lighthearted. Yeah. The Joker origin film has released date. Yes, when is it? October fourth, twenty nineteen. Bastard. We've got an entire. We've got over a year to wait for it. They're going to start filming early September, hopefully, and it'll come out next year. Fair enough. So yeah, we can't really complain about that. It's got whether it'll stay on that release date. I don't know. With films, they don't tend to get delayed, do they? It's not, not really, not. unless there's something really bad, like the actors broken and. Bone. Yeah, well, they have to do like extensive reshoots, but even yeah. then, Justice League came out and that had fucking loads of reshoots. Mm. So, but yeah. Uh, but to do with that film, we have two bits of rumours for who may be in talks to be in the film. The first is Zazie Beats. I don't know if you remember her. She played Domino in Deadpool 2. Yeah. yeah. She's in talks to be in the film. Uh, no cool. no word yet on like who or what kind of role she'll play, like it's important or not, but yeah. she's in talks to be in the film. Another person who may be in the film is Robert De Niro. Goodfellas. There's only, Meet one, the there's only one Robert De Niro, so yeah. Yeah, I was just making sure. We're, yeah. We're, uh, He's in talks to me in the film as well. Not as a villain, bear, my, bear in mind as well. Although I don't know how you could be a villain in a Joker film. But, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but he's not going to okay. play a bad, he's not going to play a bad guy. Obviously, again, it's a Joker, it's a film about a bad guy, so. Yeah, how can you be the villain? That's the all guy, kinds maybe. of fucking mental loops to go through. Um, but he will be someone who is important to the Joker's life. That's what, would for. it be Gordon? I don't know. Well, Gordon was the first person to lock the Joker up. I don't know. I don't, this is what I mean. The whole, the whole, at the minute, nothing is known about this film. So I've got a feeling I know where he'll be placed. Okay. Remember, have you played? Have you seen the uh, the Killing Joke? 
mm-hmm. if they go with that sort of story arc, which I can imagine them to do because it's the popular one. It is the most popular one, yeah. Yeah, well, the Joker only gets tricked gets tricked into going into there. By, like, mafia guys. By we? mafia guys. Now, look at Robert De Niro's track record. Yeah. What's he absolutely amazing at playing? Mafia guys. Or gangsters and stuff. Or some sort of gangsters, yeah. you know what I mean? Once Upon a Time in America, The Good Fellas, uh, is it on? Breakable or Untouchable, where he plays Al Capone. No idea. He plays Al Capone a Casino, where he plays a mafia guy open in Vegas. Uh, imagine this and imagine that. Obviously, they're piss take versions, but he's still a mafia guy. Yeah. And uh, he's just, he's just a mo. If he wasn't an actor, he was he was definitely going to be a main man. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, so that's all that there is about the Joker stuff. That's, yeah. that's all that's come out at the minute. Um, keeping on the DC track though. This is a bit of a short one. What we've been calling the DCEU, the yeah. DC Extended Universe, like the films and stuff. Yeah. Apparently they're rebranding now and calling it just the world of DC. So like when you look, when you talk about the films, when you talk about Marvel films, it's MCU. Yeah, it's the MCU. When you talk about DC films now, it's, it's the, the world of DC. It's not though. <laughs> I know. I know. We call it the, DC, the DCEU. No, but, James. But now it, they're, they're rebranding it as the world of DC. Fair enough. So that's one thing. To each their own. Yeah. But uh, one thing, which is uh, keeping with DC, though, I've, I've actually I've, I've realised now looking at the, the notes, I've got to swap around a little bit. Yeah. Um, there is a Batgirl film in the works yeah. at some point. It's supposed to be written and directed by Joss Whedon because he loves that character, which yeah. is entirely fair. Um, it came yeah, out. Yeah, it, he loves that. <laughs> yeah, it came out today. Uh, actually, before you start filming this, yeah. that there's already talks about who's going to be in it, um, um, and. What they're looking is what they said is weird because they want a Kristen Stewart prototype, so yeah. not necessarily Kristen Stewart, but Kristen Stewart if she's on board for it, <laughs> I guess. But, but let's be looks honest, like her, I guess. I, don't, I really don't know. It's an odd term of phrase. It's an odd term of phrase. And you want someone as close to Kristen Stewart just without the bad side of Kristen Stewart. Yeah, the flat acting side of her. The whole it doesn't matter what's or not. I'm so happy. Yeah, she can. She could. She could be on a wedding day and still look miserable. I'm so excited. Uh, I love you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, but that's all that is on that song. But there's keeping with so Josh Whedon, many no. Twilight fans hating us right now. <laughs> Shit, those movies suck. Them fourteen-year-old fucking Jacob fans or whatever. The funniest thing was there was there's actually a supernatural episode that takes the piss out of Twilight. Does it? It's cut. There's an episode. It's cut. It's in season six or season five. It's called Live Free or Twi Hard. <laughs> It's really funny. I think it's season six, actually. It's really fucking funny. Um, but yeah, keeping with Joss Whedon, though, um, he mentioned at Comic-Con that he wants to reboot Buffy the, Vamp- Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I could see that. Buffy's going to be black as well. That's so? right. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that's, that's how they're changing things as well. Why? What's wrong with that, James? Mm-hmm. Nothing. But as, as someone who always likes to keep with continuity, it's a bit like, okay. Um, Change is always good. Yeah, I'm not denying that, but it's a case of... Eh, it's... I can't. You can't say anything on this topic without sounding like a bad person. No, go on. Say exactly but, what you want. But as I've always mentioned, I like when things keep some form of continuity. Okay. So what? Without sa- I mean, this you, isn't you, me okay, attacking okay, you. Okay. 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 You think you think Buffy Vampire Slayer? You think Sarah Michelle Gellar? Yeah, but that. But is it Sarah Michelle Gellar? It is Mich- yeah. uh, Michelle Gellar because it's SMG. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. in Call of Duty is a gun. We know. No, in Call of Duty, no. If if you play the. Uh, Oh, what one's it? The zombie map where it's them. It's Robert England. Uh, f- plays machete. Oh yeah. It's him. Uh, Daryl's brother from The Walking Dead. Oh well, yeah, Michael Rooker. Yeah, my I couldn't remember. I can never get remember his name. We talked about him like I know, <laughs> but I can never remember his name. And uh, said Michelle Gaylor. Now, if you play any of the other three characters and you get. An SMG off the wall. Yeah. It makes the comment goes, Oh, SMG. Sir, is this your gun? <laughs> so it's kinda of funny. Okay, fair enough. But uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean it's not it doesn't bother me really. It's just I know I know my sister's a big Buffy fan. I've not told her this news yet. I don't know if she's actually caught on herself, but I don't really know if she'll give a shit. Who but... would you play? Who would you cast as though? I mean obviously Well that's the thing, they don't know. They haven't said anybody who's gonna play Buffy, they just know that she would they want Buffy to be black. Well wouldn't self personally straight off the bat, I would put Domino. So, Zazie Beats. Yeah. I know, but she might be busy with Joker. She might be busy. So. She might be busy, but that's who I'd put as the actor. And obviously, Actress. if she's in X Force, the next Deadpool film. 
Yeah, she could be that as well. Uh, I really don't know. As I say, I just thought it was worth mentioning because I know this is a series that a lot of people love from the fucking 90s. It was early 2000s? A, it was 90s into the early 2000s, but originally it was a film in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, there's that. Um, the, the plan is to build upon what they've sort of created already, but make it more contemporary, which just means modern. Just set it in a more modern So they're going to have phones. They're going to have smartphones. Oh my god. Compute, internet won't suck <laughs> like it did back in the day. It's like. Uh, I mean, it still sucks now, but still. I wonder if they still go to the. If I wonder if they're still going to go to the library to find out what creature they're dealing with. <laughs> or are they just going to. Just gonna... go on Google that quick. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be the episode, won't it? We're fighting. I don't know, a fucking Wendigo. Give me a minute. Yeah, let's go. Got it, okay. <laughs> let's get the pieces. Fuck it, let's kill it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the new Buffy. Oh god! The hardest part. I've got no signal. Fuck! I'm out of signal. You're in the middle of a fight. Like I need some information. I've got no signal. Has anybody got 4G? Why is there no Wi-Fi in this place? <laughs> god. Okay, moving on. Oh no, she's black. She's gonna be ghetto as well. So. <laughs> Swiftly moving on. Swiftly, quickly. So quickly. Uh, the Walking Dead. That was there was a panel at Comic Con. The Walking Dead season yeah. nine starts this October. October 9th? I think, I think it's it October 9th. I we think watch- it's 8th in England, but it's 7th. Well, you watched the trailer before with the date on it. I forget. I th- no, it's October 7th in America. I think it comes out on the 8th yeah. over here. We usually get it like the day after, I think. Yeah, it's not. Or if you have like Now TV, you can get it as soon as it's finished. Yeah. But by the by. So apparently it's only been rumoured up to now that Andrew Lincoln was leaving, even yeah. though that's been reported for ages. But it's now been officially confirmed, confirmed. by him himself. Uh, Robert Kirkman, who makes the fucking show. He's also made comments as I'm well. I'm gonna miss him. I'm, yeah, I'll miss him too. But I can understand why he's going home. Because yeah. it, it's like he misses his family. You know, he's got kids. He's not probably sitting like God knows how long. They well, spend nine like, years nearly. <laughs> they spend like nine months out of a year filming this show in that in Georgia as well, which is fucking in the hot. Summer. Exactly, it's fucking hot. So I can understand. And him he's got a break. beard. I can understand him wanting a break from the show. Yeah. I really can. Um, but he sort of he had a comment to say. He said no one is bigger than the story, and the story this year is unbelievable. So. A lot of people think he's going to die. I don't think he's going to die. I, I've got two theories. He's either going to die or he's going to do the whole my son's dead, there's nothing for me here, I, I must move on. He's, 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 it's going to the whole thing was like, I build up this in this this community. <laughs> it's time I move on. So I'm going to go Because he's also said that, you know, he's, not, he's, he's mentioned as well, he's not done with the character of Rip Grimes, so possibly he's going to pop back every now and again. Maybe. Maybe. Or flashbacks, I don't really know. I mean, the only thing is... There's been... Like I said, there, as I said before, this, there's rumours. Yeah. But I want to know your opinion on this. Okay. Who's going to take over the whole Rick Grimes persona, if you want? Like, like who's going to take that leadership role? Yeah, I, I've got two characters in mind. Well, I can say now it's not going to be Maggie, because she's leaving too, apparently. Is she? Uh... Well, it wasn't also it wasn't also confirmed at Comic-Con, but she's. I think there's also reports that she's stepping out of the role as well. Yeah, she's going into more movies, sort of things, though. She started yeah. off in uh, Batman vs. Superman. She's got a few... She's had a few small times. Yeah, things. she's in BVS for, like, all of ten minutes, getting shot. Yeah. Um, With Negan! <laughs> I know. The madness. Uh, it'd be Michonne or, or Daryl, I think. See, that's where I'd have to differ. I'm going to think it's either going to be Negan is going to take over mm. as the Rick Grimes or it's going to be Daryl. Well, see, I know that I know that no more no more Rick Grimes is like the so far the biggest like turn away from the comics they've done so far. Yeah. Like, everything else they've kept mo- I mean, yeah, they've they've altered some they've some altered aspects some of the comics. Things. But this is where they've gone completely off the fucking deep end. This just they've gone wild, man. It's like this is the way the comics is going and they've just turned a sharp right turn. Cause... Yeah, but as we've said before, sorry about that. Uh, as we've said before, they have to keep it different because if anyone's reading the comics, they're gonna yeah, they're watch gonna the know. T V program and just be like, Yeah, seen this coming. Yeah, exactly. So So they've had to change it up slightly, but I think by changing up slightly they've gone a bit into the own world. It's it's going a bit predictable, and also, I don't know about you, but this last season's felt very stakeless. To be Apart honest, from Carl dying, which was a very again another big turn from the comics. Yeah, it's just felt very. Yeah, meh. but he's he's branched away from acting altogether. I know, character. I know. He's, he's at uni now, isn't he? Yeah, he's in uni. He's doing his own thing. He, he yeah. he's, uh, If I remember correctly, I think he's trying to become a doctor. I fucking hell. Mm. 
Imagine it's just about to have open heart surgery by a guy with an eye patch. Carl Grimes comes in and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> just, oh god, no, no! This is my will and testament. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's a, that's a big shock. Yeah, it is, yeah. So, anyway, okay, next bit of news is Marvel news because we don't get enough of that here, really. No, do we fuck? We don't and get it's the Spider Man news as well. This Apparently. All you. This is all me. Apparently, Hydro Man is looking to make an appearance in Far From Home. See, you said this to me before, and I had no idea who Hydro Man is. To be honest, I don't know him very well either. I just know he's another one of Spidey's villains. It's very, like, D list. I just don't get why they don't actually give us a a, hero, a, 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 a character that we know and love. Well, I, we, said, we, said, we mentioned this, like, I don't know if we mentioned this last week or weeks prior, but when when Marvel are doing Spider-Man now, they don't want to tread old ground just yet. Like, obviously, we want Green Goblin, because at some point... No, I don't even mean so much like Green Goblin. I'm more on about stuff like Rhino. Well, yeah, but that's Scorpion. What, that's what I mean. These are the big villains. Well, Scorpion's in the MCU, technically. Do not remember the, the, the post credit scene from Homecoming? When I haven't seen it yet. You've not seen Homecoming? Not yet, no. Oh, mate, I'll lend you it. It's downstairs. I need to. It's just... Well, I, what, I even better. Out. Even better. You know the guy who plays Vass in Far Cry 3? Shut up. It's him. He plays Matt Gargan in the MCU. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and there's a whole post credit scene where he's in prison with the Vulture and he's talking about, like, there's a few other guys who want to get, get, get at this guy. Uh-huh. So, yeah. But, but, yeah, I'll lend you the DVD, you can watch it, but, um, Hydro Man's just, he's just a really, as I say, they're not going to retread old characters just yet. Obviously, we're going to get fucking Doc Ock and Green Goblin at some point, because well, they're, get, like, his biggest get, villains. Didn't we, we didn't get Green Goblin, but didn't we get that, uh, adaptation of the Green Goblin? In... Ah, uh, Andrew's Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, in the second one, yeah, yeah, we got Harry Osborn's Green Goblin. But that's what I mean. Because these characters have been used already by Sony and those films, you know, take yeah. them or leave them, Marvel won't do their own thing. And if people are still thinking about those movies now, yeah, they're going to be like, oh, wasn't this played by another guy like a few years ago? Again, think yeah, of like the layman's gonna, terms. You're never going to be able to... No offence. <coughs> it's going to be a hard, hard uphill battle to try and beat William Defoe's version of the Green Goblin. Oh, yeah, I know. That is going to be a hard, hard boot, like, hard work. Yeah, no, I actually watched a video the other day. It was, like, fan casting certain characters, and he actually suggested someone other than Willem Defoe to play Green Goblin. I was like, yeah, it wasn't. I can't remember. I'll, we'll look okay. at the video after this, after this podcast, but it did seem like a good choice. Um, but, so, yeah, either way, Hydra Man, they're going to look at... He's may, He may be appearing in Spider-Man Far From Home, which is, like, what, the sixth or seventh character who might be appearing so far? Um, but, again, a total rumour. Pinch of salt. All that bollocks. Well, as you said, it's going to be like a road trip type thing, so obviously it just makes more sense for him to bump into more characters. Yeah. But I hope they don't put too many characters in and sort of wash out. Yeah, don't ruin the story by overloading us with characters. That's yeah. what Spider-Man 3 did. Wrong. Yeah. We had what? Sandman, well, Venom. Well, a lot more than well, just yeah. that. Yeah, we had what? Sandman, Venom. So we sort of had a Green Goblin at one point as well. Yeah, which is Harry Osborn. Just, yeah, there was just too much in that film. Anyway. Uh, but speaking with Spider, keeping with Spider though, there was a, also a Venom panel at Comic Con with Tom Hardy there as well. People got those like you know those little, like face mask things. They got Venom smiles on it. I was like that looks really cool. I want one. I'm gonna get one. I really want one. Um, there was even guys right there dressed as Mad Max, Fury Roads, Tom Hardy character yeah. with one of the masks on. Oh, yeah. that's fucking cool. I would love to go. You know what? I'm gonna do that for a Comic Con. <laughs> I'm gonna go as Mad Max. Do it. Um, so they mentioned. It's obviously a very big talking point with Venom. Like, you know, is Spidey in it? Is he not in it? Where's the big white spider thing on his chest? Which apparently now, as update to last week's story, there isn't a big white spider on his chest like we said it's going to be. But he will have these, like, white veiny line things all over his body. It won't resemble a spider, but it will sort of keep in line of that... Yeah, I see what you're saying. The whiteness that contrasts his, the black symbiote. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. They've mentioned Spidey at the Comic-Con panel saying that at some point down the road... We'll we would Spidey. like to. Will we meet Spidey and Venom? Will meet. How it'll work and when it'll work, no idea. They also fucked up the, the origins anyway, so they can do what the fuck they want. No, I know. I, apparently, though, as well, Sony really wanted to get Spider-Man in this film in some way, and as well as I may be getting my information wrong here, but as far as I'm aware, they're doing reshoots soon as well. The film's coming out in fucking two months, and they're still doing reshoots. They're doing very minor reshoots this summer, so okay. Maybe we'll see. I don't know. Okay. But that's all for that. That's never a good sign for a film, let's be honest. No, definitely not. Um, 
I've I just noticed now I've made a massive fuck up on this on these notes. The Come next on. the next point I've written I've written on the notes for those who can't see this. Obviously, I've written down Mr. Fantastic season two announced. That's not meant to say that. That's getting confused with the next story on the list. But what it's meant to say is Iron Fist season two has been announced and confirmed for September seventh. I could care less. No, I know me neither. But I will say. As I've said in the past, the whole the whole season one, it was really bad. Tell me the truth! We are telling you the truth. You're lying! Yeah, I know, it was so bad. But apparently they're going to fix a lot of those issues. So hopefully they're not going to choreograph the fight scenes and then film it straight away. Mm-hmm. Like they have in this. But either way, it's supposed to be better. We'll he see. He's got his ass kicked as well. Yeah, I know. He's meant to be some super Buddha kung fu kicking. Yeah, bat, he's supposed to be a guy. badass, but he's a total pussy in the first season. He just gets his ass kicked every time and he's like. Hopefully they'll fix it for season two. Are you going to believe the truth yet? <laughs> you know what I mean? But the, the, the date should uh, should ring some bells, though, because... Don't say the 22nd of Feb. No, September 7th. September 7th this year. Same day, Spider-Man comes out. Spider-Man PS4, same day. So that should out. ring true for you, not me. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, basically, no one's going to watch it because everyone's going to be playing Spider-Man. So, we'll see. Um, now, on to the actual story that involves Mr. Fantastic, I should I should say... I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. E. No. No, I'm not going to try it. What is it? That one there. It's like Ian Grufford. He's English as well. That's an odd name. That is the most English name I can think of, though. I know, but... Hi, you... my name is Ian Grufford. I know, but... Yeah, he played Miss Fantastic yes. in the... Do you remember the old Fox films? The actual good Fantastic Four films? Yeah. Or at least compared to the 2016 version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to be in the MCU. He's mentioned that he wants to, you know... To hop on board. He wants to be Mr. Fantastic in MCU. Could you imagine? Oh no! I thought <laughs> I, the funniest thing was when I was hit, when I when I was like go like looking into the story. My first initial thought was, wouldn't it be so funny if you played Doctor Doom? <laughs> what would be the irony in it? I know that'd be so brilliant though. If like when the Fantastic Four eventually make their way into the MCU, who hell who else should play Doctor Doom but the man who played Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> I thought that would I thought that'd be a brilliant idea. So yeah, I wouldn't if, if it's, it's not the worst idea. It's not the best though, is it? No, but it'd be funny. It would be. It'd, it'd be more. It'd be, it'd be especially funny if like us, you grew up with those films, the Fantastic Four films. There'd be some like little kids sitting there going, "I don't get it." I don't get the joke. We're all just like pissing our sides laughing, and this kid's like, "Just Doctor Doom." What the fuck? It's like, yeah, but you don't know, man. I'm gonna Doctor Doom your mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a new one. Uh, but yeah, he just mentioned recently that he wants to be the MCU. Obviously, Chris Evans, who played. Human Torch, no. back, uh, alongside him, actually, is in the MCU. It's doing now. Very well. Uh, it's so now he's like, yeah, Captain go on. I'll, I'll see if I can get in there somewhere. Do you know what? I didn't actually get onto it for a while, yeah. What, I remember that was him? That it was the Human Torch, you know, because he got buff. Oh, yeah, he got <laughs> He, he got, got buff. Yeah. And, he got, uh, and yet both. Not blonde. No, he went... In the, he was, in the, yeah, he was like in the fanta- in Fantastic, he was bald. So oh, he, was a, he was a skinhead? Yeah, he was a skinhead. He had, like, little sparkles, but he wasn't, like... G- 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 okay, I'm not gonna lie. The dude is hot as shit in as uh, playing Mister uh, playing Captain, Captain America. America. Yeah. When I looked at him in Fantastic Four, it was kind of like you just. Cool. I mean, he was he was pretty like he had a he was athletic. He was toned. Yeah, that's what I mean. He was athletic. Yeah, but then he played He's Captain America, both. and he was like, <laughs> you you could he could break you seven ways from Sunday. I mean, I wouldn't complain. Exactly, you wouldn't complain. <laughs> but, um, now, we mentioned earlier that, unfortunately, the Twitter thing... The Twitter thing with James Gunn isn't the only story on this list. Which oh, God. Dan Harmon, who makes Rick and Morty, yeah. he's fucked off Twitter as well. Because he he did a sketch, like, ten or so years ago, which is apparently which is very offensive, and that's been brought to light as well. He's not been fired for anything for it. It's just been... It's just been brought up, that's all. Now, as far as I'm, as far as I'm, my memory goes from looking at the article itself, it was a sketch. It was a sketch where he played a a, a pedophile with a heart of gold. <laughs> you know how kind of like you know how kind of like Dexter is a serial killer with a heart of gold. Yeah, but uh, that's that's the sketch. It's supposed to be funny. No, if play, yeah, but if it's based off the same thing as Dexter, Dexter killed people that. Deserve, deserve to, to be killed. So yeah. are we going off? He's a paedophile that rapes kids that deserve to be raped. I don't know. This is the thing. This I'm not. I'm, Why I'm, are we laughing about this? Again, <laughs> see, this is the shit we shouldn't be laughing at, but we do. So that's that's been brought up recently, and so he's jumped off Twitter as well because of the whole James Gunn thing. I imagine. No, he's just saving his fucking job there. Now. A little bit, yeah. So everyone's getting off Twitter because Twitter is deadly. We all know this. 
Oh, God. So that's all for the film and TV news. It took us a while, but we got there. I know. It's pedophile with a heart of gold. That's ridiculous. I'll find the video that I got that information from later and I'll show you, but it's oh, ridiculous. A pedophile with the heart of gold. I know. Sounds like a Catholic priest. <laughs> It's so funny because it's true. <laughs> anyway. There's a special place in hell for people like me and you, you know. I told you, we'll do the podcast from hell in the future. <laughs> Approved by Satan. I, I agree with these guys. <laughs> yeah, I like everything they say. Please listen to the podcast. Okay. So the game and news. Oof. Right. There's a few things that got announced this weekend. Uh, the first thing is a Walking Dead VR game it's called Saints and Sinners. This, that just sounds like Far Cry. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, coming 2019. It's set in New Orleans. The city is flooded, so you're just exploring a flooded, flooded city, trying to survive that. You're going to be forced to deal with other survivors and scavenge and stuff. Now, my first question is: Are these other survivors NPCs or other players? See, no. My first question is: Why the fuck is all is Orleans flooded? I know it's a swamp city, but. Well, yeah, but it's like end of the world, so the water's not been kept in check or anything like the that. The water doesn't get kept in check. In che- it gets okay. kept in check to a degree, but it I wouldn't flood. I don't know. This is just what this is just pre- press release, mate. I don't know. We can let them like I've, it. Never, I've never been to New Orleans. I don't know these things. We're going to New Orleans. I'd fucking love to. It'd be great. Uh, yeah, so forced to do with the survivors. I want to know if they're NPCs or other players, because if they're other players, I might have a problem with that. Yeah, I you're, hate people. You're, you're not a friendly person. I hate people. It'll be like playing Skyrim and I'll just go fucking ah, <laughs> hack at them until they die. It was supposed to be showcased this last weekend yeah. at Comic Con, uh, but so far, as I'm recording this, there's not been any footage come out or anything more discussed about it. So I mean, I don't know how I feel about that because apart from the Telltale games, every time a Walking Dead's been made, especially in first person. Yeah, it's not been the greatest. It's it's it's. Well, that Overkill set to come out sometime this year, isn't it? I know, and that pisses me off that that first person. I was really looking forward to it to be more like a division style game. Well, it might have third person options. I don't know. We don't know yet until it comes out. And to be fair, there was talks that that was going to have VR functionality as well. What? Apparently, yeah. That was uh, that when that was first announced. It was saying that's going to also have like, like Resident Evil Seven has playable in VR. Yeah. It'd be the same thing for that, but. I really don't know. I've not heard anything else about that, so I assume maybe that was like, that was just fake news. <laughs> but fake news. Fake news. <laughs> but the next thing that got announced makes me happy. They announced another Digimon game. They announced yes. another another. This game. is definitely all yes. you, bro. This is all me. I'm gonna go all in on this. I right, feel so. like I've just sort of. I've only come here today just to go. Yes. No. Yes. For the most part. Yeah. Uh huh. But come on, this fake I, lo- news. I love Digimon though. <laughs> I've mentioned this before that you know Pokemon Digimon Digimon anytime. I love Pokemon, but I love Digimon more. So, either way, yeah. It's called Digimon Survive. It's supposed to come out next year. Yeah. There was a whole article in uh, the Weekly Jump magazine, which is like a Japanese magazine series, mm-hmm. I assume. It's a survival simulation RPG. A Digimon survival game. So, you, your character gets sent to the digital world and you got to survive. Your partner Digimon is Argumon. I'm like, yes, that's immediately a win in my See, book. See, I, I, I know enough... To know that, <laughs> yes, that's, that's where it, that's the main part here. Yeah, it's like you get to, you partner with Argumon, and apparently it's gonna be story based, story and choice based, kind of like Telltale, but obviously have like interactive fighting elements as well. The way they described the 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 combat and stuff, um, like simulation battles, uh, choices to determine victory, move Digimon on the field, and use energy and stuff to attack and evolve. It sounds a lot like Disgaea, which is like it's looking like a grid based, yeah, like a grid based map. Yeah. You direct enemies, you direct your guys where you want to go. They attack, end your turn. That kind of gameplay. That's how it sounds. But the most interesting part of all this is the fact that, as I say, it's going to be choice-based. So, you know, what you choose determines how the story goes. And it also affects how, who you can unlock digivolving-wise. So if you make the wrong choices, that Argumon's not going to turn to a Greymon. He's going to turn to a Numamon, which is just a fucking big slug thing. Yeah, I remember. I know enough. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Not that much. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, but... A survival Digimon game, it really intrigues me because it sounds similar to like the like the old school PS1 games where you had to like basically have a fucking Tamagotchi and keep it alive, which is just uh, reminiscent of one of the more recent games, which I've got upstairs. And just that quick to interrupt there. I remember, right, long story short, I was ripping up my wardrobe, it needed the good clean. Okay. I came across an old Tamagotchi. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. I mean, man's dead. It's been dead for four years. Yeah, I know. The, that, 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 that creature is so dead. I give it to my f- six-year-old niece. 
I thought she was. I was expecting her. What is it? This is. Shit. I don't get it. It's shit. Explained how it works and all that. Mm. Yeah. She has kept that thing alive for two months now. Fucking hell. She is. She is. <laughs> Why not? Tamagotchi's making a comeback. It probably would be. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. I think you can get Tamagotchi we, on your phone. To be honest, we have a, we don't we have a mutual friend who had a Tamagotchi recently. If you remember, oh yeah, yeah, we did. So. Forgot about that. Yeah, but yeah, it, that's the story. This is, that got announced. I was super happy because I love the Digimon games. Yeah. I think they are very they're not very popular in terms of like being they don't sell loads of copies like Pokemon does. But when you, I think Pokemon's just more of a well known franchise because it was sort of even though Digimon came out roughly the same time. Yeah, around about as, yeah. Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I think Pokemon was just sort of that little bit more advanced. Yeah. Not advanced, it was a bit more ahead. Mm-hmm. So uh, as we were growing up, we were like, oh, you just need to watch Pokemon. So then that generation got in there. Was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Digimon just sort of stayed here. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, and I get that. It might have progressed a little bit, but not as half as much as Pokemon. So Pokemon just become more of a well known name. No, po- if you think about the amount of games Pokemon's released. Digimon probably released at least half of those games. Yeah. But they've been good games. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. With, with the exception of one or two. Yeah. Um, I can just, imagine, like, just like Pokemon. Yeah, I can imagine Digimon to have a lot more of a... Cult following. Yeah. Yeah. Than just a mainstream following. Yeah, basically. I think that's the best way, but no, yeah. But either way, I'm excited for this game. It sounds interesting. And yeah, I love Argumon. I love Argumon. He's my favourite Digimon, so... Uh, but the next bit of news is this is this is you news Black Ops Four, as we know, it's obviously no single player; it's multiplayer only game, which pisses me off. I'm yes, not getting into this. We, we are not getting into the this. battle royale mode they're going to include in the game because every game's going to have battle royale mode now. It's, it's called the thing. Blackout. That's what it's called. It's called Blackout mode, and these details are going to release now. They're not confirmed. Okay, they're just leaked. So, pinch of salt all the way. Um, so. The map, it's going to be one map, like in Fortnite and PUBG and stuff like this. Yeah. One big map. It's going to be the biggest map in Call of Duty history. So any any map that's been that big so far, bigger than that, apparently. Wow. And much like Fortnite and PUBG, it's going to be that whole, here is a space getting smaller and smaller and yeah. smaller kind of thing. Stops people from camp. That's the only advantage I can, I'll actually give Fortnite and yeah. PUBG and stuff. It stops people from camping. But I think the way to this... To a degree. With the way these details go... Unlike Fortnite and PUBG, where it's not the same place that gets narrowed in all the time, yeah. there's a different location each time. They're sticking with one location here, and in the center of the map is going to be Nuketown. Nuketown! Nuketown! Nuketown specifically from Black Ops 2 Zombies, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. It's a different a different layout of Nuketown, but it's a specific... No, it's the same layout, it's just it's got a different skin over it. It's a more, yeah. it's a more futuristic, like, the bus sort of is futuristic, it's autonomous. Yeah. And the cars are more... That, so that's apparently what's going to be in the middle of the map, is Nuketown of Black Ops 2 Zombies. Damn. Nuketown. So, again, pitch of salt. Then again, no, if we talk about zombies, yeah, it does have a different layout. Certain areas are blocked off, so you can't just... Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm we'll not see how that goes. Um, but then, as well as that, they're going to s- room it again to support at least 50 players on a map. I think I think you said 50 is the definitive minimum they're going to. Yeah. They're aiming a bit higher with like 64 players. See, that's what does my head in Black Ops uh, with Call of Duty. I tell you, you're just saying as if it's something new. Battlefield have been doing that for years. Yeah. They've been doing it standard. Yeah, I know. But you this know is the first. This is their first time doing like a battle royale style, isn't it? And yeah. I, I I imagine with Fortnite do not Fortnite, Battlefield doing their own battle royale mode. They might have bigger versions, might, might more player count in theirs. I don't know. It, it just it hurts to see these big games cave to. It's just what's popular right now. They need to keep with what's popular. Unfortunately. I get it's a it's a business it's a business tactician's view, and it's a great business tactic. But it just it hurts. I know, I know, mate. Um, I mean, as long as that's not a sole thing, as long as that's like a mode that you can choose. Yeah, I don't imagine they're not going to go the the COD route and see like, oh, there's no single players this year. It's just no. I mean, like a, even if COD has the multiplayer, but it's like still gives you the free for all. Uh, search and destroy, search and re- search and rescue, or I oh, know as far as I'm aware, they're still doing that with sounds. That's all I'm I'm asked about. I probably I probably dabble as a FPS fan. I'll probably dabble mm-hmm. in the whole blackout, but yeah, I won't be that person that hams it. Like just yeah, just every match is that that that. Yeah, no. 
Uh, and the last bit to do with it is that it's going to have like 150 HP, your last set amount of HP. Yeah. You, can, you can't you can like, you know, hide down a wall and regenerate health. you got to pick up health packs and there'll be weapon loot with like rarities and stuff. Obviously, you find a more rare, rare weapon, it's going to do more damage. As I, long as I, I still start off with an M1911, I'll be happy. We'll find out when it comes out. And again, all these we've just mentioned now are total rumours, so yeah. take it with a pinch of salt. But the next thing that's not so much a rumour is Fallout 76 beta. Or as... Todd Houses called it a break it early mode because yeah because yeah, to be to be a beta it's got to be out way before the game comes out yeah not like a month before which is when this beta is coming out yeah it comes out in October so you can you can you can get the beta for Fallout seventy six if you pre order the game f- from specific retailers see I'm really worried about Fallout man to be fair they have said that whatever fallout the next fallout game fallout 5 is it's gonna be a single player kind of narrative situation oh so the, the game after the game after it is gonna be more focused on story like like bethesda normally do it's just this one i think they just had an idea and they want to go with it i think this is just more of a test and sort of simulation of it because don't get me wrong as much as i've I, I love the Fallout franchise and i love the single player and stuff like that yeah sometimes it's nice to have uh non-playable character with with you mm-hmm. when you're doing certain things. Yeah. Like, if you're going to raid a big-ass base full of super mutants, sometimes it's nice to have... A, some backup. Just to have a little bit of backup, you know, someone with a, you know, someone with a nice, big, fat boy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's nice. So, but sometimes they're fucking stupid. Yeah, NPCs sometimes aren't the basis. Like, it's like, realize. I'll get this guy. Okay, I'll hit him with a nuke. No, I'm here. I'm too close to the nuke. <laughs> you know what you I mean? say as your skin falls off your face. <laughs> Hold on, great aiming. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I suppose like just say for instance, me and you were playing it, and I was like, right, I'll take the left, you take the right. You know you're taking the right. Mm-hmm. You're taking the right. You're killing everything there. I'm gonna take these guys. You take them guys. Yeah. And we'll converse in the middle. Mm-hmm. We can work it like that because it's another person. It's another person brain. that's got a brain and can figure it out and yeah. work. So, as much as I'm not a fan of going online with it there are some elements that I do like because of it yeah it kind of gives me that dying light sort of feeling okay you know what I mean it's still the same same story same mission Mm -hmm. same destination same everyone does what they need to do yeah but you know yourself as a big fan as a fan of the dying light series Mm -hmm. it's always nice to just have that someone watching your back yeah it is you know what I mean especially in the night time yeah but that's my feeling. But as you were saying, so oh, yeah. So, well, the story here is just that they've announced the beta is coming out in October. And again, if you pre-order the game, you can maybe get a chance to play it. It's not so much like you pre-order, you will get the beta. As far as I'm aware, it's more of like you pre-order and get entered into a chance to play the beta. Oh, fair enough. So, I don't know if the list has come out yet for which retailers are going to do this thing. Uh, but as far as retailers in the UK go, we have like two. We have two main ones. That's yeah. It. We have game and then. Amazon sort of yeah I mean we've got there's like certain other things like s- smaller game franchises that are mainly I mean, just yeah, single like, shot like games like the independent kind of people I imagine they could do pre-orders and stuff as well but like I don't think I don't think Bethesda's gonna go to fucking this little tiny game and games and more shop in Wigan and be like oh yeah we'll give you guys pre-order codes for, for Fallout 76 yeah I mean, if they did, they'd probably get a lot of business, but I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to look at the bigger names, and yeah. as far as my knowledge goes of gaming shops in the UK, we only really have game. Cause, I mean, CX is obviously a game shop. It's more of an entertainment shop. Yeah, else. it's more of an entertainment where game is solely based on... Whereas games is just games, and yeah. like gaming tech and stuff, so... But yeah, so again, no, I don't think any listeners come out just yet. This has all just come out today, so we'll see about that. Um, next piece of news is a bit of a Another like job posting thing, which is sort of like given us a bit of uh, insight to what's next. Sony Santa Monica, who did get, who did God of War, yeah. obviously, they've they've asked, they've posted for a job for concept artists to quote design new gods. Mhm. Yes. That that that. I think create well. their own gods or new got new designs. For... Probably designing probably new designs for existing like gods. Thorn, shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um. So. Are they working on the sequel already? Or is this going to be a big DLC patch? What do you think? DLC or new sequel already? I I don't... If it's a sequel, I hope they're working on it now. 
but they're not planning on releasing it for a good like no, it's good four or five years. Well, ago. this this one took like yeah four or five years. I'd 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 imagine if this does come out on PS4, it would take at least maybe two to three years, um, because you've already kind of got the the framework built up with this game. So it wouldn't take as much to. No, it wouldn't. But at the same time, if it does take a while, like the last one does, it might be the next gen kind of game. Mm-hmm. But either way, it may be maybe it's just DLC though. Maybe I mean, they just can't work on a problem fat with the DLC. DLC. It might just be a big DLC, which will be ma- which will be good. But yeah. I'm kind of sitting here and thinking, mm, but if they do go see, I hope they don't do an Assassin's Creed. That's all I'm, and all over oh, Facebook no. as well, all God, over no. Facebook, and when I'm seeing things that have been linked from Twitter to Facebook and YouTube and any other social media, everyone Assassin's Creed's dead. Yeah, Assassin's Creed's gone. There's no more Assassin's Creed. This is not Assassin's Creed. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people are fuming. Yeah, no, I, d- I doubt they'll go Assassin's Creed because you think Assassin's Creed is so copy paste. Whereas God, of- we think how God of War was when it came out. It looks gorgeous. It plays well. That took people. And it's just the- brutality. <laughs> yeah, they took time to invest and they invested time into that game to make it what it was. So they're not going to pop out another game next year. That's no. ridiculous. Did you know though? Do you know when the first God of War came out? It was actually like that close from being banned at the same time. Hit, uh, Hitman was. Oh really? Not Hitman. Hitman. Uh, Manhunt. Manhunt. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, Didn't know that. Because of the realist, because of the unrealistic brutality and gore. I was like, okay, you moan at us when we're putting plastic bags over someone's head and suffocating them to death. That was too realistic. So we went completely the opposite end. Fucking cutting heads off my toes and shit. It's like, and nope. you're still moaning. No, nope, too much violence. They're not gonna be happy until we're all little pumps. Oh god, no. Until we're all little pumps and little zannies and whatever fucking else little mumble rapper names come up with. <laughs> oh god, I hate them. I, I hate. Know. Them. I want them all to die in a fucking burning chaos of destruction. Okay. Goose Fraba. Goose Fraba. Okay, moving on slowly. Okay. Swiftly. Swiftly and slowly. <laughs> uh, so, did you ever play Shadow of Mordor? I haven't played the franchises whatsoever. They're meant to be really good, and I've been told to play them. Mm-hmm. One, I just haven't come across a, any. I haven't come across the game to buy it. Does that make like sense? Like a cheap enough. Yeah, yeah, not even that cheap enough. Like just, and it's not sort of one of them games that I played the Batman Arkham Cities and Arkham Asylums and stuff like that. And everyone's telling me it was pretty much the same sort of feature, and I was like. Mm. I'd say for the most part, yeah, you can get that vibe, but it does. It, I, I'm not gonna lie. The Nemesis system is a is brilliant. Yeah. Like the the whole idea that you know, because you can't die really. Well, you you can die, but you keep coming back. Yeah. If you were to die by the hands of a certain orc who's just like a fucking grunt. Yeah. He'll get promoted and then work his way through the ranks, and you can either take him out or like get your revenge or anything like that. So yeah, the Nemesis system, it, it's really good because it it remembers. That's what I mean. That's a good way to put it. The Nemesis system remembers, so you get like a unique experience each time. But overall, I like the game. It's just it just kind of dragged again. Um, I haven't touched the second one, Shadow of War, but there's now a demo available for Shadow of War, which is the way there wasn't before. It's a hefty demo though. It's like twenty gig. Wow. Yeah. So it's a big demo, but the date, anything you do in that game, like save wise, it will transfer if you get the full game. Oh, fair enough. So, but as far as I'm aware, the second game is a bit more um, strategy based. Because you have, like, armies to, like, command and stuff. But, again, I like the first one. I just didn't want to play the second one. So, plus, it also... The second one came out around that whole microtransaction debacle last year. Because that had microtransactions too. So, yeah, that's by the by. If you're a fan of that series, go get the demo. It's a big download, but go go give it a go. But, another good series is coming out soon. Uh, Spyro, the Reignited Trilogy. This is all you, bro. This is coming out in September. This is all you. Uh, I just need to answer this. Thing and because time. because the the guy who made the music for the original games, Stuart Copeland, he's on yeah. board with the re- the Reignited Trilogy. He's redone music for this for this trilogy. But in game, you can choose to play with old music yeah. or the new stuff. So they they showed off uh, a trailer of one level from Spyro Two, I believe, and you obviously they showed off the new music for the setting. But then they switched it up to the old setting, and immediately like this like this little switch in my head just went on like, oh my god, I remember this music, I remember this level so vividly. So I think that's a nice touch. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna they're gonna give you the option to have 
the 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 tune the music we rem- we remember as kids <laughs> to play and it's gonna be like it's not gonna be like a DLC thing it's in game you can just go in the options menu and be like new music old music new music old music so old music <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna play I, I feel like when I get to playing it I may just like uh, as like a first time through before I go back and like collect everything yeah you're I think play I'll play the with old music. The, no I think I'll play with like the new music first <gasps> time through but then going back and collecting everything and proper spending a good Good, how many, how many hours getting everything done? I will be like, switch the old tunes, probably. Go on. Let's, let's just let's, let's just relive enjoy. my childhood a little bit. Oh, there it is. So. <laughs> just like that. Oh, I have no worries. <laughs> oh, life is good. Uh, okay, so. But, bit like what's his name in uh, Far Cry 5. I told you I didn't want to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I remember now. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. not I'm not ruining it for anyone, but I know. you know the well, scene I'm on. I know which one you're on, right? Yeah. Um, Moving on, Resident Evil 2, the remake, which is coming out next year. January 25th, I think. Kingdom Hearts 29th, 25th. I think it comes out the 25th, yeah. Yeah. Um, For some people, for some reason, people thought there might be VR function in it, like Resident Evil 7. To which I, I, I never had that notion from when they first officially revealed it. Did you have that idea in your head? I didn't, but I can understand why people did. Yeah, because just Resident with Evil 7, Seven and had the had the couple ways of playing it. But I, personally, I never thought it was going to be in Resident Evil Two Remake, and officially, it isn't. Good. There is there isn't going to be. There's a part of me that's happy about that. Well, yeah, because it's really not the kind of game for that. Not even that. I mean, yeah, we played we played first person with Chris Redfield in Seven. No. Oh yeah, well the DLC. Yeah, yeah the DLC. Yeah, but it's the case of that's a different story. Than... But that's what I mean. That's a whole different story, and that's like setting a different sort of there. This is going back to when Leon first started. Mm-hmm. Be a cop, they said. First day's always easy, they said. But, you know. Plus, the only way they could do VR is either switch it to first person, which I would admittedly be pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah, it would be. But at the same time, the other way they could do it is over the shoulder, and VR over the shoulder just doesn't work. It's no. Cause... In platforming, it kind of works because you have like a. A space to look down on like with platform and stuff like I've discussed previously but with something like the Resident Evil formula it's over the shoulder I mean I've never played VR over the shoulder type of game every time i played VR it's been first person first person so yeah. I can't really give too much of a over the shoulder sort of view on that do you know what I mean I can say that of all the VR games I've played again with the exception of the platformers where you sort of look down on a space to guide the character around yeah there isn't one that's like a camera behind the shoulder sort of scenario for that's playing. what I mean so it, I mean don't get me wrong it just wouldn't work the only way I can really see VR working is not so much over the shoulder or first person remember like fixed camera angles more than anything else yeah, yeah but I don't see that working with VR that either wouldn't, that wouldn't work what I'm saying is that'd be the only way it would really work for me is like it'd just be like playing it normally except with the VR on it'd be like it kind of there instead of being on the telly makes sense. Yeah, it'd feel more like the old games in that respect. That's what I mean, and not and the whole as point, much as everyone loved the old ones. They yeah. fucking fixed the whole angles one. The whole appeal of the remake is the fact that it's a new over angle. the shoulder sort of yeah, thing. So, but sticking with the remake, they announced a collector's edition. Two hundred dollars it's going to be though, which is standard fare really, collector's edition wise. Uh, they haven't really they haven't announced any UK editions though. As far as I'm aware, right now it's only available at GameStop. How much is it in yen? No, dollars. No, yen. I want how much is in yen. It's only in America so far. God damn it. GameStop exclusive. It's going to be packaged in like a big item box from the games. You know, like the big... You know how you have item boxes? Yeah. In, it's going to be packaged in one of them. Um, it's going to come with a 12-inch Leon figurine, which is standard for a collector's edition usually. You have a big statue of some kind. Yeah. An art book, again, standard affair. Blueprints of the Raccoon City Police Department. Yes! That's pretty sick. Uh, unique DLC costumes, which I think you can get if you pre-order it on the store as well. Uh, a soundtrack, and and a few more bits as well. Well, it seems like you're definitely getting your money's worth for it. Aren't you? Yeah, most definitely. And obviously a copy of the game. That's <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> hopefully. you pay 200 quid, and I'm the fucking game in it. That's like, <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, you know me, I'm not very one for collector's editions and stuff like yeah. that. But when it comes to certain games like the God of War Collector's Edition, and I'm probably gonna try my best to get this Collector's Edition, because you know it's Resident Evil, yeah, and Raccoon City, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Leon, and it's an item box as well. That's yeah. pretty cool. So uh, pass that down to the kid, grandkids, and 
This was how we used to live back in the day. <laughs> uh, but keep up Resident Evil, though. Vaguely, sort of. Uh, you know the MC5, which you're also excited for? Yeah. It's running on the RE engine. That's why it looks so good. Yeah, that's why it looks so good, and that's why it's, why it's for the most part, go, the development is going along so smoothly, because the engine's already built. They're aiming for, like, proper, like, 60 FPS standard oh. with the DMC5, make it proper action orientated, obviously, but, like, top-end action game. So, they have a lot of high hopes for this game, really. Can I excuse myself? Uh, by all means, mate. Just, you know, clean up afterwards. <laughs> that's all I ask. Damn it. Yeah, see, I knew you'd fall on that one. <laughs> uh, another game we're looking forward to, sort of, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That's coming out in September. Mm-hmm. Tail end of September, if I believe correctly. It's gone gold, basically. Now, I can tell by looking on your face, you know what that means. No. Oh. When you talk about games and stuff, if you ever see a, a news article or, or any kind of publication that says, I don't know, Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, has gone gold. That basically means... I am actually looking forward to that game. No, no, but when it says it's gone gold, that means the game is done. Oh, fair enough. So it just means it's done, it's on disc, it's... It's just waiting. Essentially, yeah, it's waiting in a warehouse somewhere to be fucking sent out to shops. We must find day. these warehouses. We will raid these warehouses. Well, do you remember back when GTA Five was coming out? There was, yeah. a, there, was a, there was a whole shipment of that that got stolen, remember? Yeah, I remember that. Like a van got nicked full of copies of GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how excited people were for that fucking game get out of the fucking car I love that we get to play this game you've just lived it <laughs> you just lived a section of this game <laughs> yeah so yeah either way yeah Shadow of the Tomb Raider's gone gold it's out in the in the ethos now nice. um, that's coming out in September so I, I kind of want to play it but I'm also not foaming at the mouth to play it do you know what I mean so I probably, I'll probably pick it up eventually but not on launch so um, but now we've got a whole bunch of Spider-Man news. We're going to finish off with Spider-Man news. Go on. Okay, so the first bit of news. Mary Jane is obviously in the game. And I think she's a playable character as well, you know. Joe makes me laugh, though. And I've, I've, I've actually been keeping my eye on this because I've wanted just to get to this point. Okay. It's kind of more of a... It's a bit of a funny play on words, right? Okay. Mary Jane is this laid-back, chilled character. I see where you're going with this. And as I dis- I only recently discovered as well because of by accident. Back in the day, when you know, back in like the seventies and that, when you know marijuana was like the thing to go to. Yeah. And everyone was like, everyone got more creative because they smoked a bit of weed. <laughs> Obviously, a euthanism back in the day for we- for cannabis was Mary Jane, and apparently that's where they got the name from. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. And that's why, like, when he was just draw- drawing this character, he's like, she's so laid back and she's chilled, man. And She's very accepting of Peter's lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, my God. She's the stoner. <laughs> she's getting called Mary Jane. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, we know she's in the game. She's in a few trailers. And some of the trailers, she does, like, the sneaking thing, which looks like you get to play as her a little bit in, like, stealth sections. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. That'd be cool. But the, the news here is who's playing it, Laura Bailey. Um... Very famous voice actress. I was gonna say I'm better with faces than names, but uh, I could I could uh, I could get things over there quick. I can rattle off a few things she's played that quick for. Yeah, that's what um, I mean. Just a few things that quick. Okay, so let's think. Um, <laughs> I can rattle off. Uh... Yeah, this is where I'm <laughs> I can't even think of anything now. I'll get you a picture for it, but she's. Pl- I guarantee you've heard her voice. No, probably. Have. I guarantee it. Um, she. Oh, God. I'm trying to think. I know she was in, she was in Dragon Ball Z for one yeah. thing. She played Trunks, little, little Trunks. Ah. There you go. There's a picture of Laura Bailey. She was Nadine in Uncharted Four. Yeah, I know she is. No. She was. Oh God, she was in a lot. She's in so much things. So, so many things. It's hard to. You know, Gears of War, the new, the new, newer games. With... I've never played Gears of War. No, but you, you. Ah oh God. Um. No, but I know you're not about to. Go the on. female lead in it. She's in it. Um. Okay, Laura Bailey, here we go. Iron DB. Say it comes to comes to say the day again. Let's see what she's known for, actress wise. She has over four hundred acting credits. Damn. She has a lot of voice work under her belt. Uh she plays Black Widow in the Avengers cartoon. Yeah. Uh let's see. She's Mary Jane in the Spider Man game, as we already discussed. She's in The Last of Us Part Two as a character called Anna. Nice. No idea who that is yet. In the Batman Telltale game, she plays Catwoman Selena Kyle. No, oh, fair enough. Uh, she's in Farpoint. You know the female scientist in Farpoint we played a little bit of. Yeah, she's that. That's her as well. Uh, let's see. As I said, Nadine Ross in Uncharted. Um, I'm trying to think what's the most famous role she's done. To be honest, she's done so much. She re- she's Chun Li. 
Chun Li in Street Fighter. Well, in Street for Street Fighter Five specifically, she was. I, I imagine she's enough. done it a few times beforehand. But honestly, I could we could be here for days. Wait, was so she in Battlefield for Hard Point? Uh, hard she was line? just some some background characters in. Oh, hard fair line. enough. Yeah. So, but as I say, we could be here all day looking through voice actress stuff. But I guarantee you've heard her voice before. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's playing Mary Jane essentially. Um, I am sweating. Yeah, me too. Uh, we'll finish up quickly. Silver Sable is going to be in the Spider-Man game. I don't even know Silver Sable. She's like a mercenary character. I can't. Like, again, Spider-Man's more your thing. Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, I mean, like, comic book-wise, she's she's quite... She's like a mercenary in the comics. She's been hired by the mayor to take down Spider-Man, so I imagine, like, throughout the game, that's sort of, like, the antagonist that yeah, initial yeah, yeah. encounter is her forces. Uh, the final pre-order suit has been revealed, because they've, they've, they've said for a while you get three pre-order suits if you pre-order Spider-Man. They revealed the first one, then saved second, third. Yeah. The last one's been revealed. It's the Velocity suit. Kind of like a futuristic, like, metallic yeah. looking thing. It looks pretty sick. The other suit is the Infinity War Spider-Man suit. And the, other, the last one is Spider-Punk. Uh, so if you pre-order the game, you'll get those. They also announced an art book that you can buy as well, limited edition art book. Um, some vinyl, some vinyl, vinyls. Yeah. Soundtrack some stuff. vinyl, vinyls, vinyls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, some hot toys as well, like you know, f- figurines, and there's a limited edition PS4 Pro you can buy as well. One terabyte model, big red white spider emblem. I'm pretty sure it's actually sold out on Amazon already. Yeah. So if you wanted to go for it, you could probably go check out Game or something in the UK. But I imagine that console, like the Collect Edition, is already sold out everywhere. Probably. And the last bit of news for Spider-Man PS4, and the last bit of news together, you can't replay missions in Spider-Man PS4, and there may or may not be a story, a new game plus mode. Personally, it doesn't bother me. Um, but you know, a lot of people do like to go back and play yeah, certain missions. With with missions that you may not do so well on, when you finish the game and are stronger, you can go back and do better. Yeah. But, uh, apparently, that's not going to be in it at least. As for New Game Plus, I don't know if it'd be in it at launch, but it could be a God of War thing where they patch it later. Yeah. So maybe they will, maybe they won't. As I say, it doesn't bother me personally because I'm sure they've already padded out the game enough with ways to level up Spider Man and make him better. So it, you may or may not need two playthroughs to get. A maxed out Spidey. But yeah. we'll see when the game comes out. It's not long now. It's like just over two months, I think. No, just over a m- month and a half, I think. Really? September 7th. We're on the July 25th, so... Just over a month. A month and about two weeks. Yeah. Two and a half month weeks. and a half. Yeah, month, same month and a half, I'll get. Yeah. That is all the news for this week. Wow. Oh, God. It, like I said, it. I told you it'd be a big one. The, I did say. Well... Comic Con, man. Yeah. I know. Now, this is actually is our longest episode. Yeah, but we're going to, uh, 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 we need to give it four more minutes. Yeah, uh, give it four minutes to, to reach out the two hour mark. Is there anything else you want to throw in, Liam, in that case then or not? I mean, apart from being really excited for like a few games coming out, not a much. As I say, I'm pretty sure the Mega Man X collection comes out today or sometime this week. I mean, come on, Mega Man, what a game. If you pre-ordered it with the PS Plus account, you can actually get it cheaper. Really? Yeah. I've, if it comes out today, though, obviously you can't pre-order it, it's already out, but I think... I think the base price for like one of the collections is only like twelve quid oh, or fifteen. Move. So and that's like I say, it's like four games in one collection. So yeah. you really can't move, can you? I probably I'm I'm thinking of picking up the second collection mainly because I have that connection with um, X8. Yeah, that's like the one I played like loads as a kid. So I might pick up the second collection. Um, other than that, I can't think of any other big game releases to be honest. I'd say Walking Dead final season comes out start of start of August. In fact, we'll do the roundup next next week of the of the upcoming games of August. I um, did last time. I mean, the only thing I can say is the game. Ah, you <laughs> motherfucker! It took sixteen episodes, but bitch, I won this one. Oh my god, you actually remembered for once? <laughs> Good lord! I can't believe you the gamed me. <laughs> I just the gamed you, bro. Oh my goodness. Right, well, I think that's all for us, folks. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Well, actually, no, fuck Twitter. No, <laughs> fuck Twitter. Fuck Twitter. And anything else you guys like, um, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. See you guys next time. Liam already games me, so I guess we'll just say <laughs> bye-bye. Deuces. Son of a bitch. <laughs>
I'm always afraid I'll go too far. I'm like, <laughs> end up fucking paralysed. <laughs> Shit! Ah, balls. And now I can explain the dead I'll, body. I'll do the Stephen Hawking thing for the podcast. Hello and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the myth, the legend, Liam Falcon. <laughs> that like, end. Uh, you spelled that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Spell autocorrect, sir. <laughs> Bastards. Right. <sighs> yeah, we're definitely oh, going to hell. <laughs>